Hello all and welcome back to the Uncharted X podcast. This is Ben and this is episode number seven. In this show, we're doing another Swapcast with the Snake Brothers. Uh, we also have a special guest. We're going to have a few special guests on these going forward, I think. Uh, in this show, it's Chuck, my friend Chuck from the CF Apps 7865 YouTube channel. Chuck does great work if you haven't seen um, his channel before. I'd, I'd highly recommend going and checking it out. He's just passed 100,000 subs after like 10 years on YouTube. Uh, it's a it's a great achievement, so congratulations to him. And in this episode, we're talking about the second pyramid at Giza, attributed loosely to Khafra, or Chepherin, if you prefer it Greek, uh, also called the Mountain of the West, which Chuck will explain. Uh, it's a it's a good show. We get we get into quite a bit of detail. We go inside and out, as well as looking at some of the pyramid pyramid structures, or I guess the structures that surround the pyramid. Um, and as always, there is a video companion to this podcast. You can find it on my YouTube channel. You can also find it on my website, which is unchartedx.com. If you're interested in supporting the show, supporting the channel, supporting the work I do, you can find all of those details through that value for value model at unchartedx.com slash support. Hope you enjoy the podcast. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, ben from Uncharted X here uh, doing another swap cast with a couple of uh, my favorite uh, other broadcasters that talk about these things. We've got the Kyle and Russ, the brothers of the serpent. Hey guys, how's it going? Yep, happy to be here. Good stuff, and uh, also happy to have uh, CF Apps seven eight six five Chuck in the in the channel. How's it going, Chuck? Great, glad to be here, Ben. Ready to talk. Good stuff. Yeah, we did uh, we did one of these the other week, and it, uh, it I think it went down pretty well. And we'd planned to to revisit a few of these sites and. We've got sort of an interesting one to uh, to get to today. The uh, the second pyramid at Giza. Um, yeah, it should be should should be an interesting uh, an interesting little journey inside and out. Excellent. Yeah, they have multiple names for it, right? Is Khafre or Chefrin? Yep. Yep. Khafra, as Yusuf would Khafra. say. Khafra. Yeah, whether you like it, Khafra. if you like. I, pre- it. I prefer to call it the Mountain of the West. Because I think that's what it's called in the ancient text. Mountain of the West. And that's what I look at a lot when looking at, yep, the Mountain of the West. Yep. I like that name. Where's the source for that? What's the, is there a, is that a term you've The Book come of up Coming with? Forth by Day, one of them. No, uh, it's very, it's a very interesting thing because down at Abydos, they talk about the very same thing, the Mountain of the West, and there's actually a mountain down there called the Mountain of Anubis. And there's a very strange tomb and a a shaft that goes like, I think an eighth of a mile underneath that mountain. And then there's a huge granite box down there. It's kind of like the same story that we have at Giza almost with the Osiris shaft and the Mountain of the West. Okay. there's just a lot of correlations. And of course it says Anubis guards the sacred mountain of the West. And yeah, yeah. That's what I look at, what the Egyptians tell us was going on there. Yeah. Right. Cause there's not a whole lot of references to pyramids otherwise in uh, specifically anyway, in a lot of the literature. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, just one more thing I wanted to mention real quickly before we dive into this is that uh, I know Chuck, his channel, if people aren't subscribed to Chuck's channel or the Brothers of the Serpent for that matter, go and subscribe. But Chuck's approaching a big milestone too. It's CF App 7865. Uh, 99,000 subs, nearly at 100. So uh, congrats on the 99 and let's see if we can get yeah. you over that hundreds. Congratulations, man. Yeah. That's- it's pretty incredible. It's Long pretty time. incredible. I remember I was blown away when I got to 1,000. I thought, wow how the heck could I ever get a thousand? And now about six years later, the ball just keeps on rolling, I guess. All good right. stuff. Yeah, good stuff. All right, let me uh, let me share screen here and hopefully make all this uh, little technology uh, work for us. There we go. All right, you guys can see that? Yep, looks good. So we'll just get into it. There's, um, I'll, I'll, I'll let this roll in the background. We've got a few different segments to go through. I think initially this first part, we're going to look at some of the, the features outside of the pyramid, but I kind of wanted to set some, some context with this footage about where it, and, you know, how it sits at Giza, where it is in relation to all the other you know, monuments and things that people know about on that site. So this is um, you know, approaching, I guess, from the, you can see the Valley Temple here and the head of the Sphinx poking up. You've got the Great Pyramid. And then, you know, obviously the, uh, the second pyramid, the Mountain of the West is, is in the middle. And then a little further <laughs> to, the, to the left, you have uh, the third major pyramid at Giza. But it's, you know, this, this structure to me is, 
I don't know. It's interesting. I, I actually we'll get into it in a little bit, but I think I think there's a chance that this may that the chronology may be a little different to how we we think it we think it is. I think there's a, a chance that this second pyramid could have actually been the initial pyramid. Um, there's a lot of things about it that sort of make me think it's perhaps older. Uh, not the least of which it's the one in the middle. It's the one that's connected to the Sphinx, which there's an awful lot of evidence suggesting that that's older than the dynastic Egyptians. Uh, it's connected by that causeway. When you and Jimmy and George and those guys were walking around, was there a distinct difference when you just, I mean, is there a distinct difference or is it just kind of little hints? That's what I was wondering about. I, there, there's some specific differences with the second pyramid that I think that are different to the Great Pyramid. For one, it's, it's, it's far more megalithic and we'll see this. It, the blocks in its structure are larger that's not to say that there aren't large blocks in the in the Great Pyramid. Certainly, the you know the granite blocks in the in the King's Chamber, like seventy tons, but you, you have blocks in the masonry of the of the Second Pyramid, and you'll see this on the bottom courses that are way bigger than the blocks that you see uh, in the Great Pyramid. It seems like they use slightly smaller blocks. They're still like two or three ton blocks, but you've got you've got ones I think in the in the Second Pyramid here that could be 15, 20, 25 tons, maybe even maybe even heavier. Um, Things like that. And, you know, it's also, I, I look at it as like a little bit uh, kind of logically is the other thing too. Like the internal structure is not as complicated as the, the, the Great Pyramid. Um, and it's it's also uh, a little bit smaller. So it's like what would, what really would come first if you were following a, a typical sort of natural progression of, of, of a building and, and learning, you know, if you were building one structure, maybe you, you were going to build the next one. I'm not sure. You'd, you, I'm not sure the first one you'd build would be the greatest one of all. Like that's, I guess that's the uh, some of the logic behind it too. Yeah, the thing I just kind of get to when figuring out the age of this, would a fourth dynasty king put a massive pyramid into an acropolis that was already there because some of those tombs go back further than Khufu in the fourth dynasty would they have put a massive pyramid in the middle of a necropolis or would a necropolis get built around sacred old structures yeah and there is one answer that is just totally obvious to me yeah yeah i would agree so uh, the video here is you're zooming in and out on the casing stones that are still at the top of the mm -hmm. second pyramid and I, one question I've always had is how how is it that they're still up there? Uh, you know, like what what's holding them basically? I, I, why don't they fall down? They're they're basically fixed into the under, underlying structure, right? That's that's why they're still there. The, Otherwise, they're, they would just fall down. Yeah, so they they are. There's the back end of them are wedged in, and it, it is all. There's no mortar in it. Um, yeah. It's they are they are wedged into to, wedged into place there and and as you said it's the top sort of third of it or the top uh, I guess twenty twenty five percent of it has the casing stone still on it. and they're remarkable these are the fine Tura wine Tura limestone all these casing stones came from a uh, different quarry but uh, yeah it's I'm not sure exactly how they're still up there it's inc it's actually remarkable that they're still there having after being um, I guess shaken around this, and then they they think that the the reason that some of them are out of place is due to minor earthquakes. The pyramidion yeah. on top is missing, but yeah, we this is the best. I think this is the prettiest pyramid, really, because it, it has it gives you a good indication of you get a, you a, just a little sense of what it might have been like. You know, all of these having the two pyramids cased in this type of lime limestone. Yeah, um, well, just because it. I mean, this is a this sounds a bit silly when you first hear it, but. The fact that those casing stones are still up there, yeah, has made me wonder if they started from the top and in installing them. Uh, because it's like it's almost like a paint job. You start from the top right. and paint your way towards the floor, right? Because that that yeah. because if you started building them up from the bottom and then let's say you get two thirds of the way up and then somebody drops a block and it goes sliding all the way down, damaging all the casing stones all the way down, you start from the top and go and work your way down. Right. That won't you, happen. You can't damage it. And the fact that they're still up there at the very top implies that they can be built that way. You know, as long as it, they can it's, the lower it's one. Very, it's very interesting you say that because I believe either on that Good pyramid point. or the Great Pyramid, they did dating on the mortar, some of the mortar that was some somewhere around there. And they mm -hmm. found that the top of it 
was older than the bottom. That's right. That's the other mm. thing that has made me wonder about it. That's that some of the stuff has made it seem like the top is older. And I'm like, well, yeah, when you're doing the finishing out <laughs> the final uh, polishing of the whole structure, you start at the top and work your way down. And I don't know. Right. It's a good point. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I know the blocks do get smaller. So the courses, they do get, they get smaller as it goes higher. So the bigger, <laughs> the bigger courses were, are, there is actually, and it's funny, there's, this is, there's also a little bit of imprecision in this one relative to the Great Pyramid. There's, there's, a, it's, it's, it's a very slight twist to it because it's not perfectly square. There's, it sort of twists ah. just a tiny bit, uh, and then the courses get get smaller. And then there's this, there's a notable layer in the middle somewhere in these courses of, of where they leveled it perfectly. So there's they kind of build up and then they they leveled it perfectly, kind of halfway up, and then kind of built on top of it again, like the structure itself. The case, uh, I think, the casing stones. Yeah, maybe they, they started from the top down, but there's a there's a couple of oddities about its construction. But the other thing, what what about ahead. those what about those casing stones compared to the casing stones on the Ben Pyramid? Is there a difference? Seems to me, um, remembering old footage, it seems the Ben Pyramid is a little different the way those casing stones are kind of locked into place. Th those are definitely. That's why I think. Yeah, there's there's they're they're really. Like there's an angle to those that I, I, it, just from memory that like, I mean if you look closely I, I don't know this is you can sort of see how it's been wedged in on top of the masonry block so there's it's sort of being held in by pressure and then I guess the ones on the bottom where it's fallen off are supported by something beneath them but yeah, yeah. the bent yeah. the bent pyramid has those has more of an angle to the the joinery I right. guess and we'd have to look at some footage of it the, and, and that's why there's so much of that um, casing stone still on there yeah and the uh, the area that you were highlighting with the mouse just a moment ago where it breaks off right there that looks i mean how there's some sheer walls there that look pretty uh pretty big yeah how, what's the distance do you think yeah um yeah some of them are pretty big see there's there is and there's you know there's some blocks standing up underneath them here yes. and, and i know there's some of this is probably modern repair to be honest so uh, you do yeah. yeah there's definitely quarry you could tell people were cutting that stuff right there oh yeah at the top yeah, yeah. yeah. Quarry. we'll get to the quarrying there's there's a, yeah, an awful lot of talk about when it comes to quarrying here and there this has been hacked off here but so some yeah. of these vertical blocks you see is probably some of that maybe even modern repair and you see this at the bottom too and they do a good job of kind of disguising it making it look like limestone but there's actually quite a bit of modern concrete with well, they're trying i mean I, it's good you know keep them from de yeah. deteriorating further uh but there's there may be a little bit of that going on um and uh yeah it's but it's so it's it's a remarkable piece of, I mean you know the Great Pyramid kind of gets all of the um, the attention, but you know this is the second biggest, the second largest, uh, second tallest, sorry, and the second um, uh, in terms of mass. It's steeper than the Great Pyramid by about two degrees, and and there and it's only about three meters shorter. So what's that? Uh, you know nine ten feet shorter. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know it's 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 because it's steeper, it has considerably less mass. You can kind of sense the the, the the difference in the pitch here. You can yeah, see I that see it's, it. and yeah, this is from the what they call the viewing platform. This photo, so it's a picture of the the Great Pyramid and the Second Pyramid. You kind of they drive the buses up around here, and the it's another <laughs> it's another vendor attack location. Well, they'll uh, <laughs> they'll I'll come at you with all of the the, the shiny wares that you can purchase. But, yeah, um, it looks like uh, right there in the midsection below the casing stones, but a, there's like this clean level where you can see the, the stair stepping yeah. very clearly. Um, any ideas what's going on there? Why is it? Yeah, why is it more? It, I don't know. It's cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they've just taken the casing stones off here and they haven't. They didn't. It was a little too high up to, to just be quarrying regular limestone because there's definitely. Like as we go around it, I don't know if this might be the face here. You can't see it from this angle, but there's like big divots. Like you can see these huge, uh -huh. big sort of where where a large amount of material has been removed from the side of it because it, it has been you know extensively quarried as well as going through earthquakes over millennia. But uh, yeah, it's, I cannot I, imagine the thinking behind. I mean, I just <laughs> I don't know. I can't get my mind around the idea of like, oh yeah, let's go get stone off of that you know like <laughs> right i can't imagine doing that yeah well is there, it, it, is is there a local legend ben where that stone went 
I mean, there's a ton of it. The limestone, in particular, there's a, there's a ton of it that's that's made out you know, like some of the structures in Cairo, like the, a lot of buildings and stuff, the mosques and and whatnot. There's a lot. The of mosque that. of Muhammad Ali. I think I did a video yeah. on that about three years ago, where they pretty much know for sure. But that's a lot of that's a lot of limestone there. This is this is as it as this is like from the base of the third pyramid, kind of panning around. There's a lot of limestone and a lot of granite too. That's the other thing. As as we go around the outside of this, the, the bottom two courses. At least the bottom one, I think the bottom two were, were cased in granite, Aswan granite. And this is, we get to talk about the sort of the ridiculous claims about quarrying in the Old Kingdom, just when you get it, it's just a look at like how much granite's laying around. And this is the offcuts from quarrying that mm -hmm. began, I mean, as far as we know, in the 19th dynasty, again, Ramses II. In fact, it's written on the wall which of the enclosure in the pyramid that the overseer of the quarry was quarrying the granite of this pyramid for Ramsey II for a temple at Heliopolis. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, there's so much. Do you to know see. that uh, one of the, uh, oh, I'm sorry to talk over you, but one okay. of the six dynasty pyramids, I think down at Abu Sir, mm -hmm. they have stone from the causeway all the way, you know, right in the sixth dynasty down there. I didn't know. And that. they would do that to attach themselves to the gods. Now, right. are they considering people just a few centuries before them gods, or some of them that came way before? Yeah, I mean, fourth dynasties like, like that's your, a lot like, of mystery. Yeah, a few. Yeah, yeah, that's not that. That's not that long before these guys, because that's the other the other part about all of this. I mean, this all of these mega pyramids, you know, from Aberlwash and and well, just the sites you've got. You've got this. You've got Zaywet El Aran. You've got. Um, Dashur, you've got Giza. This you're talking about a period of about 100 to 120, 30 years where they supposedly built all of these. And not not only that, but huge they. Difference. Sorry, go ahead, Chuck. Huge difference in those. Yeah, there is. Yeah, big big period. I mean, so Khufu was supposedly. Uh, oh no, sorry, uh, Kafra was supposedly um, Khufu's son or perhaps his brother. I think, but he was, I think he was his son. And uh, so, yeah, you know, you've got these successive generations of of these kings that then in their lifetime built these structures. And, and so what I want to look at now, before we get into the pyramid itself and then walk around it, I've got some footage of some of the structures that are connected to it. So you'd call it sort of part of the, the pyramid structure itself because, you know, everyone talks about the pyramid itself, but there is, when you look at just how much work and stonework and masonry was involved, not only in the pyramid, but in the foundation plus all of the the structures around it you've got these 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 huge structures that were built just around these pyramids causeways you know there's there's a tremendous amount of stuff that went on you know not just in the pyramid you you have a huge amount of work in all of the structures around it and it's all the same sort of massive megalithic granite in fact this is out the front of the uh the second pyramid just to the side of the causeway the structure behind this footage is is what they'd call the pyramid temple, or it's just the, the actual structure that was built that's on the causeway that leads down to the Sphinx, and then they have the valley temple. You know, most pyramids have that set up where you have a, a pyramid, you have a you, what they call a temple, but there's a structure at the pyramid, there's a causeway, and then a, a valley temple or a structure down the, the bottom, and then same thing here. Um, but there's some really awesome, people sort of skip this, I don't often see it, but there's, just from a granite perspective, I really like some of these these curved pieces that are here. Um, that were part of like the balustrade or whatever. This is called uh, commonly sort of called the couch block because you kind of sit on it, and it's, tourists sit on it, and it, it kind of looks like a couch. But yeah, is that yeah. the one? I think Don mentions this in his latest book, right? Chris Dunn. Yep. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah he. Chris Dunn talks about these pieces. They're um, you know, there's no straight cuts here. There's you know, you 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 can't sort of how do you hollow? You can't hollow out that. Uh, that inside uh, cut with with a with a with a saw or a blade or or grinding it out, and then it's when you get to look at it, it's it's remarkably regular. Like when you look at it at the end, um, and a couple other things to note with the the quality of the granite that you have here is these large chunks of feldspar and mica and quartz that are in it. This isn't is that Ben is that proven to be from Aswan the same as in like the King's Chamber? Have they done this tests is, on some of that out there? This is Aswan granite. I don't know if they've tested this specifically. This piece here isn't. This is a different type. But in general, mostly they attribute pretty much all of the pink granite to Aswan. Um, 
I haven't heard of too many other cases where they talk about like the pink granite coming from other quarries. There's definitely been other quarries for other types of granite, but most of the pink stuff they call they they say is is, is Aswan granite. Uh, I don't know if it's been tested specifically. But so this kind of leads me to that discussion around quarrying and the the old kingdom. So it's it's still orthodox. It's still part of the regular story that that they will that that and it's not really talked about much. But they they don't believe that the old kingdom Egyptians had the ability to quarry granite because they didn't have the iron tools. It's too hard to get the stuff uh, to get the stuff out. And you can just see how beautiful that that and smooth it is, and then how straight that that line is. Like you know, it's not there's oh, yeah. no visible imperfections to it. Um, and they you know the orthodox story says that the old kingdom all of the granite works from the old kingdom. They weren't quarrying that stone. They were they were finding it in surface boulders and in other just like pieces of granite that were laying around. Which is ask any geologist who who then looks at this stone and and ask them if that's surface granite and they'll probably laugh at you. It's you know to get large pieces that that you know, you know old kingdom had massive columns. You've got seventy ton blocks. You've got even bigger pieces from the old kingdom. You have to dig down into the mountainside to get pieces of granite that are that big, and then also the quality of the granite that comes from having you know those large chunks of material. That's typically, you know, the core of the the granite quarries and mountains. Like so, this granite has come from a quarry. You can't. There's that's a huge contradiction in the story to say, well, the old kingdom guys weren't really quarrying; they were just using stuff that was laying around. You know, it doesn't right. match the evidence that's um, right there. I think we should mention maybe that. When uh, John Anthony West had a group out there, I think about five years ago, he talked about they did core drilling about 50 feet in front of the Sphinx Temple. Yeah. And they and they hit granite 50 feet down. I think it was I think it was more like 100 feet. 100? Yeah. yeah. I, I. You've got the. Video. I'm old. My my memory is a little slow. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, well, uh, yeah, I can review that. But I know it's it, it just shocked me because how do you explain that? It's a good. Point. That's a lot of. Yeah, let's so let's just flip back real quick to see what 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 you're talking about because I've got that footage here. In fact, they might you might even be able to see the the pipe in the ground from where they drilled it. But so this is oh, the still there. Cool. This image, yeah, there is, and I, I think I don't have it in this uh, set of film, but I do. I think I I went and looked at it on this recent trip. There is it's same thing you see around the Sphinx. You can see the pipes, and you see the same thing in the Great Pyramid. Actually, there's in the entrance to the Queen's Chamber. There's where they've drilled. They typically have these metal pipes, but. Yeah, so the Valley Temple's at a lower elevation than the pyramids and the Giza Plateau itself. And so, you know, there's a there's a there's an elevation change to get stuff up to the Giza Plateau. But yeah, as as Chuck was saying, they they drilled a hundred feet or so down in front of this and hit granite. Oh my god. And it's a lot you know, there's no granite. I think there natural. was a, there was a very ancient granite harbor down there and they had it kind of shaped out like a basin yep. with granite. And if we could see what that actually looked like, because the Nile at that time, I think, was so wide, it, it went to both shores, scale and variance, like Randall talks about back at that time. Yeah. That, you know, and uh, I think if we got a look at what that really looked like, we would be twice as amazed we are at Giza at, at some of that stuff, and especially yeah. right in front of the Sphinx on that ancient harbor, for sure. Yeah, I I, I think so as well. I. Yeah, it's remarkable, and it's. I think it's also an indication that there's there, there may you know this causeway. This is always, the video right now is showing the causeway that's down from that um, structure, the the pyramid temple. It's in front of the second pyramid, so this is what connects the pyramid to the Sphinx and the Valley Temple. It's this huge constructed causeway, and it was probably roofed, and it's for sure got i think for sure got tunnels underneath it there's this i mean there's this is where the asara shaft is um mm -hmm. and there's huge shafts on this causeway that go down and and then you go down into the front of the at least 100 feet down and in front of the valley temple which you can kind of see at the end of this of this footage you've also got granite that's 100 feet down and how we how do you not think that all this stuff was connected there's clearly i think a lot going on under the ground here and i just wish we could someone could scan it properly and we could put the issue to bed. I think the same thing could be, you know, we could do this at the Sphinx and actually figure this out. But there's just, you just can't find it. You, it doesn't seem to, the research doesn't seem ever seem to happen for some reason. So this is uh, considered to be the floor of something or the roof? 
I think it's both, but this was the floor. This had a this probably had this had a roof over it, but this was a a constructed causeway. This is this is probably this is the ground level, I guess, or it's a little bit above the ground level. Uh, it's it's a huge built limestone causeway that that connects the pyramid and the, well the pyramid structure to the the valley the valley temple. Yeah, and it, it looks it definitely looks aged, much like the um, you know the Sphinx temple blocks or the or the uh, Sphinx enclosure. I mean, this is yeah. It's uh, very, very eroded, very degraded. Yeah, yep. And, and so then this, that that structure you were you were showing previously. That's uh, I don't know what you call it. The one that's right next to the pyramid Kent, that has the old limestone blocks. Mm -hmm. um, Kent Kalis, uh Yeah, they have that huge wavy. That looks like the top of it, right there. Yeah, yeah, that's it there. I think Chuck. That's yeah, the that? pyramid of Kent Kalis. So it says a. Uh, a structure or a mastaba or whatever they call it. It has. The I think she was a fourth. She was a fourth or fifth dynasty queen. Queen. And I think they just put a little tomb on top of a very sacred structure. Mm -hmm. And I think that and the Sphinx are two of the original structures built at the same time as the three pyramids. Yeah. But there was a very interesting study that I was reading, or a PDF that I did a pyramid, or a pyramid video on the uh, middle pyramid. And it talks about how much of the original mound is under Khafre's pyramid and under Kinkawe's yep. and under the Great Pyramid. And they think 11% of the mound is under Khafre's and 23% of the original mound is under the Great Pyramid. And it, yeah. it, it was an excellent study. Yeah, So interesting. But And 64% of that structure is original bedrock Kinkawe's. Oh, yes. Yeah, and there's a, a causeway going right down to the Nile. Yeah. Yeah, Keith Hamilton has done an excellent layman's guide to it as well, looking at the internal structure. Keith, mm -hmm. Keith Hamilton does amazing work. Mm -hmm. um, he creates all of these 3D models of a lot of these structures and he works from uh, images. And yeah, he's he actually has left me a couple of comments on my website. I'm, I'm, I, I should use his work more in, in, in my videos, but he's, if you ever want to understand this this Kent Cowis structure, there's a great layman's guide for it uh, from Keith Hamilton. And, just just to just to catch up on the video here just I know Matt go ahead yeah. this is the Asara shaft that's what I just want to let you guys I know on. Matt did a video on it and very go ahead Ben no no go yeah sorry I know we're probably dealing with a bit of lag I was just saying that's the Asara shaft um we just come up to it and, and took a look at the entrance to the Asara shaft this is it here below the causeway and it this is the uh, three levels that drops down 100 feet or so and then it has the boxes in the rooms and the water at the bottom. But yeah, Kent Kawas, I think, is yeah, is this structure over here behind. It's to the west? North. Yeah, so there's the that's the entrance to I know if you if you stand on top of the Valley Temple on December twenty first, the sun sets right over that. And the way they use the sun to align their structures. That tells me that King Kawe's tomb is for mummification, maybe in pre-dynastic times. Yeah. And then they'd take the mummified king right down that causeway, do a little symbolic journey on the Nile. Yeah, it makes that sense. That is my guess of what that is. Yeah. So this is, again, just made huge limestone blocks all constructed, and there's shafts all over the place down here that, that seem to dip down at least 100 feet. And then yeah, if you if you pay the money, they'll 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 allow you now to go into the Asara shaft, which is quite an adventure. Yeah, it's that causeways are curated features in Egypt, I think. Yeah, that is an amazing. Some of them are amazing. And yeah, it does make me think that it's like you were saying, Ben. It you know it probably had a roof over it, but it might also be a roof. Yeah. Yeah, or, or, or yes, I mean, it's there may even be like I just think there's not potentially a roof for a structure, it could be blocks there, but then I think I definitely think there's tunnels, even if they're in the bedrock beneath oh, it yeah. and structures. Because that's, I, I should, uh, we should look at the footage of the Asara shaft actually. It's, um, it's quite a trip. It's just, yeah, you go straight down ladders into these chambers into the bedrock. Yeah, the, well, the other question I had, you know, we were looking earlier at the Valley Temple. And I just wanted to ask you about your impressions on, I mean, cause it's, you know, you got the granite, uh, that seems to be sort of inside of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And kind of 
encasing it. And that, that granite reminds me, I've never been there, but that granite reminds me of like the Osirian. Oh, for sure. It looks like that work, right? Yeah. yeah. Which implies that that granite and the Osirian is not as old as what as the original construction of that temple because those blocks are heavily eroded and the granite's put right on top of the erosion right it's basically fit to it that's right yeah and so we could we could take here. definitely definitely multi-stage but and so robert shock talks about this with the um the valley temple so there's and you can see i have footage of that we went and found this and i, I wanted to find the spot specifically that he points to and if, there's a couple other videos online you can find where he's he's showing this uh, but yeah, so you have this very eroded limestone, and these are huge blocks of limestone, 150 yeah. tons, and they've been cased in granite. And the granite has been shaped to fit the erosion of the limestone, it looks like. There's there's definitely, yeah. it's not like a flat mating surface. There was, these limestone blocks must have been uh, eroded, and then somebody cased it in granite. So yeah, it's like, how long was the limestone there to get that eroded? <laughs> in the first right. place yeah there was what i was going to say earlier is about that that wavy pattern in the in the those huge limestone blocks at the um i guess it's the the temple right next to the pyramid we'll see them here yeah yeah so the fact that they're they continue through multiple blocks and they're on the same level and everything is interesting right suggests that it happened after it was built as opposed to the you know, they would have quarried it. You would imagine they quarried it and they would have been finely cut. Yep. Squared off. So it looks a lot like the Sphinx enclosure. It looks like the the Sphinx temple or whatever mm -hmm. they call it. The Valley Temple? Valley Temple, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I agree. It looks like all of that stuff was done at the same time. Right. Because the, the rock all has a similar erosion pattern. Yeah, it's it, exactly. It, this, there's some stuff here. And so what we're looking at here in the video is is this is back up at the causeway. This is the pyramid uh, temple, if you like. This is the pyramid structure that's in front of the temple. The causeways to the left in the image here, the pyramids to the right. Uh, and you have the same thing here where you have granite blocks. And a lot of this has been so beat up and, and quarried. We don't really know exactly what it was lo looks like. But some of the... The work here is very it's the same as the as the valley temple like you have massive blocks of limestone and and it looks like it's either been cased in or has had significant features made out of granite um and maybe we can listen to some audio here to see what see what it sounds like is it the, the mortuary temple is that what they call it i guess i guess chuck is that is that what they call the thing next to the pyramid uh the pyramid temple that yeah. is that is how i know it yeah, me too. I guess I really haven't looked at that, but we got to remember this erosion here. It seems very ancient. We can all agree on that, right? Yeah. Well, a lot of this has been buried for yeah. centuries and centuries and centuries. Yeah. The Sphinx has been buried, and the enclosure has been buried for two thirds of the time we know it to exist. Yeah. So when you when you look at your erosion, you got to take that into consideration too, and how old it is. Right. Yep. Yeah. 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 How did it get eroded? when it's buried and I, and I, you know, look at it. It's, it's this, you see this in a lot of places at Giza and it just take a look at how big the single block is too, by the way. So, so just, and imagine what it might've been like when it wasn't eroded. You, you're talking about a pretty large block. Let's see if we can catch any audio here. What is the height of this? Seven you guys hear that? And a half. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good, yeah. Eight feet maybe. It's probably a good Ooh. guess. Which is how many meters? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Under the width, I think the width I think is the same. At the top, that, yeah. the line. Oh yeah, it's it's sharp. Yeah. Holy crap! Under the width is the seam. What about the? Oh, you got. And we still haven't seen a seam in the block yet. So now we're at like where the edge of the block is around here. That's that's it's a good lens. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, that's huge. Wow. Twelve. Thirteen. Thirteen. Is there one under it too, Ben? Let's say twelve. 
Yeah, so there's this is I think this is on top of a causeway, and yeah, there is there is blocks underneath this as well. Yeah, there's definitely a, there's definitely another layer below it, and in fact, we'll get to look a bit more at the. Uh, this has all been built up because there was a slope, and, and this will become more apparent when we get to the pyramid itself. But that whole this is one of the most remarkable things about the second pyramid. It's built into a hill. It's literally on a slope, and but they've they've engineered the bedrock to make it flat. And mm-hmm. and this all slopes down to the causeway, and this is all flat here. But you can kind of see the the blocks in the floor below it. Well, so he just paced it off. It was like forty feet or something. Half, yeah, thir- thirteen meters. He said fifteen uh, steps or something. Thirteen steps, so about thirteen. You, you sort of go a meter a step, uh, more rough, roughly, right? And, you, and then there's a however much limestone weighs per cubic meter, and uh, forty-eight. Forty-eight cubic meters at least. So forty-eight cubic meters at least. This is—I don't think this is probably on the conservative side. If we divide it by two point three tons, so forty-eight cubic meters by two point three will give you how much? So, 100, 120 tons, more or less, right? So that's a 120, 130 ton block of limestone, one of one of many. We said like two. We said two and a half. That's a- but yeah and it's so. like it's it's almost decomposed it's so heavily eroded pockmarked uh you can see up at the top edge there it looks uh like a there's a deeper erosion line like that was maybe where it was buried up to for a while and wind and sand was eroding that that right. upper layer and below that is is you know i mean just yeah it's it looks like the moon <laughs> it's, <Yeah>. very- <laughs> it's cratered and pockmarked Cratered and pockmarked and just heavily decomposed. Yeah, it's very, very, very old. And like Chuck says, if you have to, if you remember that it's been buried for most of the time, like occasionally something would un- would uncover it and then it would erode a little bit and then it would get buried again. So, uh, how old must it be to look like that? There are some there are some great pictures from the early explorers that were there, 100, 150 years ago, and you can just tell that sticking out of the ground period yeah and the pyramids maybe i don't know 30 30 feet up buried right yeah well you guys ready to take a break before we come back yeah let me show you let me show you one more feature real quick can we do that we can we extend for a couple minutes and i'll show you one more thing and then we'll get on to the actual and after the break stick around because we're going to get into the inside we're going to go straight to the inside of the pyramid but so there's granite and again this and this is a point i want to make about all of these pyramid structures, and I think this is a key for a lot of the Old Kingdom stuff, you have the same mix of stones. You have granite, basalt, limestone, and alabaster. And in fact, there's alabaster or the white calisite. I just want to show you this. As we, This is sort of, again, you have these limestone blocks, but as we move up here, uh, I'll skip for that. There's a good shot of the, of the erosion um, of these blocks. But as we move up here, yeah, what that, you find... scoop out there. Yeah, the scoop. But the same thing that I talk about at Abu Sir and at about a, at a bunch of other places, you also have here in the ground, which is these channeled blocks. So there's a channel in the ground, and they and they and they run into these, and they're made often of alabaster or the white calisite, which is kind of a real expensive stone to try and make this stuff out of. There's a there's a channel block right here, and I think we look if I remember correctly. I think looking down right here, there is see right here. There's um, we're standing on it. So this this is this is the alabaster, and you can see there's the channel in it. This there, there was these underground or under under level. I don't have. I've got a ton of this uh, of footage of these uh, in a lot of places. But this is yeah white cal- calcite, and this is like a water form stone. You have to dig into springs to get this, and again to get these big chunks that are like this, you have to dig right down to the deep into these springs to find this type of stone. And for some reason, they seem to deploy these as well. And a lot of this has been quarried because it's uh, a great stone to work in and it's very pretty. But um, there's still a lot of this stuff in the ground here. And you find this in, a, in typically in the Old Kingdom pyramid structures, you find that same combination of stones. Yeah, you find that in caves and stuff too. Yep. yep. And, and, and you have the channel blocks here. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's take a break, I guess, and then we'll come back and we'll get to the inside of the pyramid. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back from the break, and uh, I guess we're we're gonna go in. Uh, Ben's gonna show us some of the interior of the pyramid, but uh, before we do that, I wanted to 
talk about these erosion patterns and you know i don't know the the specific geological processes that cause this but i have we have a very similar looking limestone rock here uh, in the texas hill country where we live and i see these types of erosion patterns yep. often hmm. always associated with a ravine you know seasonal creeks things like that where um where the when the ravine starts and it's going down and it's cutting into the into the solid limestone you will often see some of the harder areas of rock that are sticking out much like the top of this and then there will be these big curved patterns obvious i mean to me i've always thought they were cut by water right, right? um and the question is is it a current that's cutting it or is it down cutting because it seems like if it's down cutting it would create vertical grooves right right so i've always associated it with lateral flowing water and you'll often see it at the um down at the rivers wherever the the water level is you know maybe a couple of feet above you'll see these nice um curved things going along laterally along the rock above mm. the water line of the river and there'll be multiple stages of them depending on how high the hill is so that's when i saw this going across this this joint here to me that says those blocks existed then that was cut by a current right yeah and then the the one above it there's another one above it and that was a a different flow you know a um a different current so maybe it was flooding a couple of different ep episodes of flooding and it could yeah. could it also be like maybe not necessarily a current but just standing water and it's got waves you know wave like action short, like wa wind wind blown waves just cutting cutting into that yeah um, the water like, level right? drops and it's cutting the next level i don't know yeah we could go because we have a lake nearby and I'm, yeah. I'm i've seen i've seen it at the lake um yeah. you know so yeah it could be wave action um some of the some of the features we see around here are i mean huge curves you can stand inside of them they're yeah. so and they're just beautiful really? curves and they just run all along a uh you know a cliff face yeah uh so it's it's kind of hard to imagine here like you, you're standing way water. up at the top of a of a, yeah. of a hill that hundreds of feet above the um you can see you know, the, the floodplain and you're just like wow what yep. what how when did this happen what happened here so anyway i want to point that out um yeah, yeah that's it, maybe there are other processes that could do the same thing i don't know yeah good good question for a geologist and it's definitely different to the vertical erosion the rain the rainfall erosion you see in the sphinx enclosure that robert shock talks about but right uh yeah and you just again not not isolated just to this part of the of giza there's you see this at it's on several of the the areas around the pyramids i'm pretty sure you also see this in some of the the um like the pyramid temple structures at like the bent pyramid uh i think as well there's a similar degree of erosion in some of those areas but and yeah, it's, it it's be, interesting. I don't know what causes it. Yeah, it would be interesting to uh, check the elevation, you know, of these of these uh, cuts. So you might see when you find cuts at other sites, is it the same elevation? Is it higher or lower? Um, that'd be interesting. Yeah, it would. Yeah, I don't know. It's I I I I. I probably need to sort out a, a bit more of the the geologist questions. This is something for. Maybe Randall be good, or 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 any or, or a geologist, somebody that that can identify this in that type of stone. I know um, when Brian Forrester travels, he often, and, and I, I think uh, also the the Comet School itself. I mean Susan Moore, they have geologists that travel with them that have uh, have have a you know a solid understanding of that. Can probably explain it a little better, um, at least at least in terms of what happens in limestone. The other the other feature that I noticed a lot is the is all the tiny little holes. Right yep. in the exterior of the stone, we see that here a lot. Um, they call it uh, it's karst right. bedrock, meaning like little openings everywhere. And so, mm -hmm. uh, excavating down into these these hillsides and stuff, sometimes you will break into rock that's just full of these tiny little tunnels. Hmm. So that doesn't. I think that rock would obviously erode faster once it was removed from the ground. Like sometimes the, the holes are filled with a less uh, consolidated Material. type of stone. So they may erode out just with, um, you know, wet and dry, wet 
dry. They they degrade and fall out. Hmm. Um, but we see a lot of that that same kind of stuff here, and and especially on the surface, you'll see a lot of the, uh, the it looks like wormholes all into the rock. But it is we do find it digging straight into into the hillside. You'll find some rock like yeah. That. It just seems strange that they that somebody would say yeah we can use that for building stone you know right? uh, yeah it, it, it's weak right it's, <laughs> right uh, yeah but maybe yeah. they did maybe it was aesthetic you know yeah, yeah at the time yeah. yeah who knows what it looked like when they first carried it out whether it had those holes in it or not if that's something that's happened afterwards you get yeah. the feeling yeah. that it was probably pretty smooth when they originally started and we know that certainly it's, if it's come from the 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 plateau which a lot of this stone has the, the built like these big blocks um, for example, I think have uh, supposed supposed to have come from the plateau, as well as the, uh, the a lot of the blocks in the pyramids. Not all of them have had that degree of erosion to them, so it sort of lends a bit more credence to the idea that there was some sort of ground level water that that, that seems to have affected those blocks. So you don't, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, and I don't know. I haven't climbed the pyramid or anything. I haven't seen a lot of good footage up in the upper cases to see or courses to see if there's similar erosion on the limestone up there. Um, but yeah. it also reminds me of uh, like Coral Castle, right? That, yeah, that yeah, that's limestone. Uh, it's yeah. very porous. It's it's got holes all in it, and I mean, it's he built it's a pretty big structure, not pyramids, right? Yeah, yeah. But, he did. Uh, yeah, he stacked Ed, up. Ed, Edward Lee. He was quite a guy. Lee yeah. Scallon, Yeah, he dedicated his life to it. There is some footage. So I did. I, I look I recently. There's been some footage of him using block and tackles, like that was that was uncovered um, to do a lot of that mm. stuff, which was like, huh. But yeah, I don't. I I think some of the mystery may have been dispelled. At least I looked into it a while back. To, it's a good topic to revisit at some point. But um, there was some new video that came up of him actually moving blocks around with blocks and tackle, block and tackles, just yanking on chain. Either way, you cut it. Like the guy was dedicated. He just spent his life doing that stuff. I mean, it's a, it's quite a tremendous effort to build something like that, no matter how you do it. Um, yep. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. But I'd like to see it sometime. I've not seen it. So yeah. Either. Yeah, we need to go. Yeah. So I just wanted to set this uh, a little bit in terms of going into the pyramid. Pretty sure north entrance uh, on this. This is the face. There's two entrances to the pyramid. So th we'll talk a bit more about the internal structure. And you can always look up a, a map, uh, a, a schematic of the insides. This is up at the where the roughly around where the the upper entrance is. You can't get in here, but you can you can get up if the guards uh, let you. You can get up on uh, to where the actual entrance is. There's an upper and a lower entrance, and the lower entrance ent enters in in the bedrock. It's basically in this little, beneath this little hut here, I think that you see in the ground. But just for a bit of perspective, this is up on the pyramid itself, uh, looking to where it's been cut out of the hill. I talked earlier that there's this is cut into a slope, and we'll take a closer look at this this whole area out here a bit later on, um, where there's where it's been clearly quarried out of the the side of the hill. And, and we'll get around the back and look at that. But I just wanted to say, to, just to show where that second entrance is. It's up here, uh, and we're kind of coming down the steps. And then the lower entrance is down below here, and that's the one that you get into it today if you go visit. So we're walking down on the northern side um, of the pyramid, and you can see the slope of the bedrock plateau itself. And this is where they decided to build this thing for some reason. Um, <laughs> And you know, I've heard that it said that if they just moved the whole structure something like fifteen or, or twenty meters further towards the Sphinx, they wouldn't have had to deal with the issues of building it into a slope and, and had to do the remarkable kind of engineering that they did do to the bedrock and the plateau itself to, to make it to make it level and, and be the structure that it is. Uh, yeah, so it makes you wonder about um, you know, what what was the importance of the specific spot. Right. You know. There was there something underground already, um, right? Well, and, no, and so what's interesting? This is the entrance, the lower entrance that's straight into the bedrock, and everything below is is bedrock. There's there's literally this structure was could have been here before this pyramid ever was put on uh, top of it, mm -hmm. and then yeah, it looks tiled. Is it tiled there? Yeah, it is. So there's there's tiling on the on the bedrock itself, but it just other than these tile blocks, this this sinks straight down into the bedrock, which you'll see. I think in this next shot here, as we start to go down into the tunnel, right? So th this is going down from that lower entrance. This is where you you walk in, and and you'll notice, like as opposed to the Great Pyramid, a lot of the other pyramids, the the the, the this is all bedrock. There's no blocks in here. Um, the upper passageway, which connects to this one, 
is cased in, in granite inside the pyramid. So that upper entrance that, that is above this one, it is uh, it is cased in granite, but everything you'll see in this is 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 uh, bedrock, except for a couple of little exceptions, which we'll get to. And I think there's there's audio on this that we can hear. Maybe I'll turn it down a bit. Probably just my chattering, being excited, sort of. This was, and just to set the context, this is the footage from recently in December. This was like the the first oh, yeah. or second day I was there. It was just me, Yusuf and I and uh, Henry and Jimmy. And so we were just out a day ahead of the tour and we were just sort of romping around Giza and, you know. That looks very smooth too on the interior. Oh, as yeah. As I thought. Yeah, go ahead. You're right. Well, it just, it seems a lot uh, finer work than I guess in the Great Pyramid. Or is it, is it about the same? The, I think the Great Pyramid, the descent, the passageway into the, I mean, Yep. Mahmoud's hole obviously has been hammered into the Great Pyramid, but but the the casing stones and the the work inside it is is quite fine. I think um, okay. some of it's been damaged over over time, but this is incredibly good work too. This is a straight you know straight as an arrow kind of passageways. Hey, exactly is that? Ben? Are you crouching pretty seriously there? Yeah, yeah. So you're hunched down. This is this is. I think I was just telling Jimmy get used to this position because we'll be doing it quite a bit. Yeah. So you're. It's like a. Four, it's. I think it's about four foot. Little maybe a little under four feet. Uh, high this channel, this passageway. You can go down uh, forward, and I can go down forward in all in all the pyramid tunnels except for the bent pyramid. That's actually a, a tighter uh, entrance tunnel. It's it's a little smaller, and you kind of it's more comfortable to go down backwards. But there is a granite block here at the at the bottom, as well that may have been blocking this or something. I don't know, but it's 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 sort of shoved aside into an alcove. Yeah. So this is the initial descent down into the bedrock, and yeah, you'll cr you'll crunch down and you'll see it on the way out what what the posture is. And then you can stand up in here, which is not always the case in some of these structures that you can't always stand up in a lot of the spaces but certainly this this area you can so and that, you got that in there there's a shaft to the right that went further down it there like. is yes there is they call it the so-called queen's chamber which is silly because it's, that's not where she was buried like i have something else attributed to her wow and i think yusuf actually explains it here you okay yeah, it ducks down here and then it goes up again. This is the, the, yeah. uh, the torch again, real quick. I'm sorry. Wow. Have you been, have you been down in there before? No, they, <laughs> they, they, they open it up for the floor. It's on the frame A ceiling, Raqqa chamber in the bedrock. And it's what's um, labeled as the Queen's chamber as well. But the okay. academics know that this is not true because the Queen, her name is Mirza. So yeah, Merisan, I think is what he's saying, is the wife of King Kafra, and she's buried in the Eastern Cemetery. But they call this the Queen's Chamber, and it's kind of one of those contradictions. And oh, I don't yeah. know if you caught it, but Yusuf says it goes down, it opens up into a rock cut and A-framed ceiling. And I think it's about the same dimensions as uh, more or less either the King's Chamber or the Queen's Chamber in the Great Pyramid uh, is what I've heard of this chamber. Um but yeah, this is, I've not been down here. It's locked. It's a special, you know, you've got to rent the thing on a special permission and then they will, um, they will open it up for you. But yeah, there is a passageway off to the right that, that goes down. And Ben uh, is, Ben, is there any hint of soot or anything on the ceiling anywhere in there? Not that I've noticed. There's maybe, maybe a little bit in the queen's chamber itself, but no, there's, there's, um, in fact, you do want to, we do want the audio on this because there is some interesting, um, only private visits. They, they open it up for privates, but okay. see if you can see it. But I don't, I didn't recall any soot. Next step, let's go. We do the middle pyramid and the part of the surface. Yes. You cannot do all the privates on one tour. No. Yeah, next to it. Yeah, no. Let's not do that. Easier going up because you lean forward. Oh, you're right. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Are the walls plastered, or is that just? Uh, is it was it originally smooth and it's just been slightly eroded? I think that's the case. I didn't see any real real signs of plaster on these walls. Okay. Uh, obviously, it's it's been eroded, been worked on. We've added the railings and the electric system and yeah. the stairs, which makes it nice. It'd be a bit yeah. more difficult without the without the wooden stairs. Two big dudes. Thank you. 
All right, Jimmy, I'll, you can you can lead out, Jimmy. I'll... You go first on the way out, Jimmy. Okay. You cool. don't have to film my ass the whole way. <laughs> yeah, I just stopped. <laughs> we will put a sign on the, on the entrance. You if you must go first. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's always always an issue. So sometimes I've noticed like you, you, the guides typically lead you in there. So I've, you get in the habit of like, hey, uh, let, let me go. For, I've got the camera. Let me let me go first because I want the I want the shot without your ass in it. Um, so it's Say, Ben. How, yeah. Ben, let me ask you one question. In the Gray Pyramid, I know it's something like twelve stories down to the subterranean chamber. How far is it down to where you're going down there? Do you know? Not as deep, no. So it's it, you saw the the deepest part was where we where we first came down and in that little horizontal passageway. It's it's only it's I got to imagine it's probably if a, th a third of the depth of the Great Pyramid passageway. Okay. Okay. I think and that's like eighty. It's almost ninety something meters. The, the Great Pyramid descending passageway. It's a it's a long passageway. It's a, it's a hall, and this is this is not this is yeah only like a, probably a third at best. Uh, of the same sort of thing. This is bedrock. Yeah, and you're again all in the bedrock here. Yeah, that hallway. It's it's very resonant too, as you'll hear. That that looks like golden ratio proportions right there. Yeah, doesn't it? So I'll, I'll mention this because we spin around and look at yeah. it here in the in the footage. I'll just mute it real go? quick. Um, and we get a better look at this on the way out, but but the it opens up because this 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 passageway up there is where it goes up to that upper entrance so the when you turn around and look behind you there's there's like a, a big gap in the ceiling and a passageway that goes up and again we'll, okay. we'll take a closer look on the way out uh you'll also see the big air conditioning box that's in there and thankfully yep. yusuf this was nice yusuf uh knows the guys and normally and, and he actually turns it on when we're coming out you can't turn you can't pick up any of the resonance of these chambers because these things will be roaring and just a huge noise in there. And yeah. um, you also have that in the third pyramid, but Yusuf, uh, you know, knows the guy and has it, he had him turn it off for us. So uh, you, you get it, you get, we'll, we'll, we'll hear the, what it sounds like in this chamber. Um, let me put the audio back on. Yeah, that's still bedrock. You see how far the bedrock goes. Yeah. Is that iron? Look at the iron formation. Yeah. It's so strong up there. So condensed. Now, the nice question shoot. I always ask. Get to the. Going forward again. Here we go. Yeah, this is insane. This is, uh, I'm in bedrock right now. Like this is. Oh, what's going on with this thing? The guy. Uh -oh. Am I running out of? Okay. I may have ran out of uh, space. What are you saying? I got. Switching to my iPhone. <laughs> to say, I think oh man, that's cool. Yeah. I'm not quite hitting it there. All right, those look like blocks. Is that blocking on the side there? Yeah, I noticed that too. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't. I don't know. It's bedrock. Uh, whether it was had its markings or something, or yeah, I, it does. But it's like maybe it was plaster. I'm not sure. But this is, yeah, it's not. Even you, whether... Yeah, back, back up maybe five seconds. Uh, there was a whole set of them on the left. Uh, uh, yeah, on the left side. Yeah, see that? Yeah. That. I mean, it. I, I, I. It possibly is repaired. Like this, this may well have yeah. been because this was all full of debris and was was damaged. Right. Um, my guess might be that this is a mod. This is a, a modern repair since it's been. Uh, right. And that it, and Chuck, they could have. Um, cleaned it too i know they've done that in the past where they, if there's soot in here they, they clean it but yeah this this i suspect this is probably repair you can see the concrete yeah you're right and if so maybe a good point time to mention it was 1818 i think when this was was first really cleared out yep. and discovered and there'd been a few efforts to try and um to penetrate it so there was clearly like blockage and this was had some damage in here uh, and you'll know who uh, you'll know who discovered it once we get into the chamber. There's there's no All missing right. it. <laughs> Mr. C. <laughs> I can't remember who. Yeah, you'll you'll get it when we hit the when we see the wall. All right, Italian. So it's, like all, it's about it's about six feet. You see, you see the I don't know why the audio messes up a bit, but it does. You can see me in here. 
It's my part. I cut myself out of these damn footages, but you can get a sense of the height of the tunnel. <laughs> the audio also screws up a bit here. I don't know why the microphone on the thing wasn't. It sort of drops in and out a little bit here. I'd like to get a snapshot of that for for measuring. <laughs> Belzoni. Belzoni. <laughs> Yeah, so in the chamber. So yeah, Belzoni discovered this. This is the uh, the A-frame ceiling uh, of the, the chamber that's in here. The granite box is down the end. And you also have the only thing that's not... Um, there's not bedrock in here is the ceiling. And the ceiling has an A-frame ceiling. Uh, you'll see it up high. It has... Uh, and this is the fine, uh, the Tura limestone. Again, this is the, the limestone that has been brought in from uh, a, a quarry that's a distance from Giza. I'm not sure how far, but uh, that's you'll see that in the ceiling here. The entire chamber is covered in the bedrock, except for the ceiling. Yeah. The ceiling only is covered. The Tura fine limestone and looks like cement. No, it's limestone. That's a good comment. Like Henry says, it looks like cement. Like that's how it looks like a modern cement job. But nope, yeah. that's, that's however many thousands of years old fine tour yeah. of white limestone. Like the casing stone. Very finely joined. Yeah. Hmm. It's a cool space. This was only the second time I had the chance to be oh, in here on this trip. Ben, I know you've been to the pyramid, I think, of Unis or Wenus. Wenus, yeah. Is that, yeah, is that chamber in there kind of similar to those smaller pyramid chambers as, as far as their, what they look like the, with that ceiling and stuff? There's, there's an A-frame ceiling in there, I think. Yes, I think it is an A-frame, uh, I think. And we can look at Wenus. I've been there a couple of times. I'm just trying to think from memory if it has the A-frame ceiling. But that uh, kind of reminds me of those, what you find under the pyramid of Teddy and Unus and Pepe and those people, the smaller pyramids. Yeah, the, the, with, that, with that ceiling, yeah. So it looks like they, uh, they tiled around the, or you know, put stones around the uh, box there? Yeah, it's, it's kind of built into the floor. The, 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 it actually sits a little lower than floor level. And then, then they did build up around it in granite. So you have the, the box here with its lid. Which is pretty fine work. There's actually, and they're real nice drill hole. A couple, the, the tube drill holes. You can see the striations uh, on these. Um, you can also, they're actually. We just, I didn't realize this until the the last day on the tour. We came in here again. Uh, there's also tube drill holes on the underside of the lid. So maybe it was doweled into play, or there might have been something to, like a pin. I'm not, I, I think it looked to, to the eye like it lined up. Is there a Can lip on the underside of the lid? It looked like, yeah, it looked like there was a lip. Unless that was the support that's holding it up. Uh, I, and it looks like there's a lip on the inner edge of the box there, yeah. too. Yeah, uh, it, it might be a little, looks like a little lip. Let's see if I can just go back here. Just here. Yeah, when you're, yeah there's a lip there. And, and when you were walk, sort of walking up and looking straight at the, the lid, you could see what looked like a... Uh, back up a bit. You could see sort of under it. And look, yeah, see that? Or is that the board, the support that's holding that it? Uh, I think no. I think I think there. I think you're right. I think that is a that is a that is a lip. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. Sits yeah it, down it sits. It plops down in there. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah clop like funk, and then uh, I guess the edge of it probably sits right on the edge of the yes. of the thing, and you can you can see where there's. I guess they've been prying at it. Prying this at is it. probably all pry bar easy. damage to try and get it open. And then yeah, all these granite blocks around the outside. Yeah, it's a nice box. It's uh, yeah, it's 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 a nice piece of work. And so you're looking at are those those are drill holes there? That that, you're talking about? that one's eroded, but there's a drill hole here on the box. There's one on either end, and then on the underside of the lip as well of of the lid. Just on the back side there, or not? A, there's not four of them. There's only two. There's I think there's they're on the back side. Yeah. <laughs> I 
tube drills. Yeah, really nice tube drills on the corners here. Yeah. Here's some little kid running down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can hear the kid. Come in so for this the is, photo. This is the king, considered the king's chamber, right? I guess, yeah. The burial chamber, they'll call that, and that's the sarcophagus. That's... That's the story. I I've looked at a lot of fourth dynasty, a lot of fourth dynasty sarcophaguses, and that is not a fourth. Right. They decorated them. They put their life stories on them. Their afterlife journey. Mm -hmm. And if you were going to build the most impressive, one of the most impressive monuments in the world, you were going to certainly immortalize yourself like the pharaohs did there you would have put your name all over that place it makes no sense that you know somebody in the fourth dynasty would go out of their normal ways of doing things and right. not tell the world forever that this is their place it's, i think those uh sarcophagus are purely symbolic yeah yeah i th I, I agree i mean that's the other thing that again no hieroglyphs you know there's no inscriptions and in fact, I was just trying to find out how they attribute this to to Kafra in general. I know that that they that, that the whole the the statue of Kafra, the really famous one, Kafra enthroned, the diorite statue of it was found in the in the Valley Temple, and I guess by extension, and of course it has his name on it, mm -hmm. which is which is written in poorly done hieroglyphs right. well, relative to the rest of the statue. But yeah, yeah. I believe the on, the, uh, on the on the first. The dream Stella between the paws of the Sphinx had one chipped off area hieroglyphs where Koth, the first part of right. Kofre's name. Right. That's right. They think, and that's how they attributed the, mostly that's how they attributed the place to him. But Koth is such a common syllable yeah. in the ancient Egyptian text. There could have been numerous pharaohs or rulers or kings that had that in their name that is very common hmm. wasn't it wasn't that not even in a cartouche or was it was that in case within a cartouche the cough do you remember I thought that i don't remember exactly i just know that is in the part of a chipped off section of the text yeah. in the dream style that's right that's and all I... I remember specifically yeah yeah, so it's it's hard, you know, and that's and they're they're the as I, I think I said in one of my videos, and, and thus the house of cards that is history is built. You know, like that's how they build the house of cards of history, with these that's little right. attributions and, and whatnot. I mean, I would I would say that the whole Kafra and throne statue, it was probably I'm sure it was dedicated to him. It has his name was written on it at some point, but it just doesn't match the 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 engineering of the statue itself. Right, uh, which happens in a lot of them, I think. So this is again looking up at that at that upper entrance. Maybe once I work out my camera issues, there's the the bedrock above us. But then, yeah. So there's that that passageway that goes up to the upper entrance and then up into the pyramid structure, and is cased in granite. There is not one syllable of hieroglyphs in there anywhere, yeah. is there, or even graffiti? No, not as far as I know. I've never I've looked. I've not found any records of anything in this pyramid of any any writing. So they turn the air conditioner back on, and that's the sound that you hear. All the way up there, huh? Yeah, and this is bedrock with the dark lots of iron. Oh, I see, yeah, the iron in it, in the yeah. limestone. Yeah. Huh. I heard Yusuf saying there's lumps of iron in the in the limestone, like it's there's iron formations in it. Huh. But yeah, you get this roaring noise cool. normally. you go and then back out again they're not as not as complex a structure as as giza as a, as the as the great pyramid uh which you know it's again it's do you do that first or second you know it's kind of like do you, imp do you build on the designs that you did before or do you just sort of do you go backwards it's sort of an interesting oh there you go that's just not a bad little tone there for you I see it here in the waveform. Yeah. 
use that machine, it will be really hard to feed the resonance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you've I mean, is it possible that there are other still unknown passageways or interior chambers? Because most of this, you guys aren't even in the pyramid. It's, it's all underground, right? Right. Yeah, it's... um. Yeah, it's everything's the, the most of the structure. There's really I don't know if they've done any other testing uh, to what degree of testing they've done. Um, this is this is the up passageway. Uh, I don't know what degree of testing that they've done to check that, but it certainly seems possible. I mean, again, you're talking about a pyramid that's almost as big as the Great Pyramid, and yeah. it it's possible. They haven't found any other entrances. The the only entrance that they did find is that connects down to this structure. Right. It's just it. But, I'm just. Just interesting because you build that entire massive structure, but the, all the, all of the passages are in a place where the structure is completely unnecessary. Like you don't <laughs> need that giant pyramid to have these passageways. So it just seems like I don't know that yeah is is that giant triangle totally symbolic? Unless you're symbolizing. Yes, that's what I was saying. Is it in, is it entirely symbolic or does it have interior stuff? Who knows? We yeah, somebody great question. Scan it. Let's see. There's a can we get a muon yeah. detector down there? Maybe do yes. that after we get done in the Great Pyramid because they're still doing that at the Great Pyramid. But it, I'd love to. I'm sure they could plop it down in the bottom here. And uh, although that'd probably mean they have to close it off to the public again. Um, well, they just Ben. They just put ben, one of the things that you, oh, yep. One of the things Ben brought up is the chronology when these were built. I think what you have to look at is the small pyramid. Yeah. I think all these these three structures were built basic purpose. I don't know, but would would a pharaoh who wanted to be immortalized and known as the greatest ruler of all time would he have built a tiny pyramid or a small pyramid next to his predecessor, saying I'm only this great? Right. I don't think uh, that's one thing that just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, because Menkara is noticeably small. And then again, you could be right, like that could have been the first. Um, and then it gets bigger from there. It just seems to work better that way in just a, in a nature of progression too, right? It's just, um, yeah, and yeah, given that the chronology comes from the story and the, the we all, we know the dynasties and we know, and, and then you have this loose attachment that's very tenuous at best trying to associate these, various rulers with these pyramids and that's kind of how we derive the chronology of the whole site um it's definitely questionable i think yep and not, not, just, go ahead there are good questions and i i have more and i think kyle's got stuff to say too but let's take a break and then we'll come back all righty and we are back ladies and gentlemen there was third segment and we're back out of the pyramid now and so what are we going to be looking at next ben we are uh, going Go around the outside. There's a couple of things I wanted to uh, I, that are worthy of noticing, particularly, and, and this relates to how the pyramid is built into a slope of a hill and just the amount of engineering that went into it. But before we go there, we were just talking in the break about, and I mean, we mentioned earlier about the attribution of the pyramid, that there's very little uh, to, 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 there's no hieroglyphs specifically in there, and that the whole story is put together through, you know, we found this artifact over here near it. And so I wanted to maybe, I do have some footage of, the very famous diorite statue called Kuffer Enthroned. Um, it's a remarkable piece of work. You know, Petrie has quotes about it. He talks about it. He talked to artists in his time. And they were absolutely astounded about this, the, the quality of this. It's made from diorite, which is one of those, you know, stones that's harder than granite. And it's in a museum, and it's right next to this one. We'll pan around and take a look at it first. But I, uh, I've made this point in a few videos, and it's worth reinforcing here. And it, and I think we've talked about it maybe a little earlier as well. It's one of, one of my little pet... Um, points to try and make out, which is that the writing on these statues and on some of these objects, we talked about it with the Serapium, is of a, an obvious lesser quality to that of the object itself. And you see that even on these beautiful statues. And of course, the writing is how things are dated and related to the story of history, right? So based on the writing, that's how we say it was. it's this old and it was built for this king in this time period. And as we look, and we'll spin around and look at Kuffer Enthroned because it shows the same things, but this you can't get that close to it. It's because it's it's roped off. But this one you can get right up close to, and you can clearly see here 
the details of the statue itself. Look at the fingernails and everything. But the right and here, I'll just pause it real quick because there's a lotus flower motif in here, and there's a, a couple things that I typically point out are like this lotus flower motif. It's polished. It's shaped well. There's fine lines in terms of how they've shaped the stone. All of the surfaces, including the curved surfaces, are polished. Uh, clearly contemporary with the rest of the object itself. But when it comes to the writing, you can see the writing's pretty obviously been chiseled on there. There's it's yeah. chiseled marks. You see the marks. It's not. It's very very good work. It's but it's not perfect. The lines aren't quite straight. Versus the object itself has perfectly straight lines. And then the the key thing for me is the interior surfaces of these glyphs aren't polished. So the interior of this bird glyph here isn't polished. When they right. clearly did have the ability to polish any surface of the stone. So uh, this is this is the sort of thing you start to notice on on lots and lots of ancient of these of these statues, statues, slabs, boxes that have writing. And, you know, and compare that writing to the the detail that's of the chest. You see the bones in the chest. I mean, incredible work. Like whoever did this was a master of the medium and of working in the stone. You've got the belly button detail. That's all polished in there. The inside of the fingernails are all nice and polished. It just strikes me that the writing was added with a, a, a vastly different degree of technological sophistication and working in the material than yeah. the statue itself. Wow, and the breaking, the way it's uh, with the way the stone fractures reminds me a lot of flint. Yep, mm. which is really hard. <laughs> yeah, flint's a, an eight, I think, as well on the on the Mo scale. I think this stone's an eight, and then we spin around here and, and take a look at. Um, uh, this is a conglomerate that's, I think, also like granodiorite, if not diorite, or green cyanite or something. Incredibly hard stone. Uh, and we'll spin around here and actually get to Kuffer Enthroned, which is the statue that is used to uh, also to attribute the Valley Temple, the Sphinx, the, the Second Pyramid to, to uh, Kuffer. In fact, well, so Yusuf right here is pointing out the... Um, He's pointing out the, uh, the there's there's overcuts there's actual like saw cuts that have there's, they've gone a little too deep in on the armpits. Um, maybe I didn't actually get the right video here <laughs> to look at Kuffer Enthroned. It's it would be interesting too. It's the, the next one. Uh, like how how similar are these statues? They're the same position. They have the, you know, like like the way Christopher Dunn compares um, the faces. You know how was this cut out by a machine that had that built in you know what i mean is it that yeah. close or are they i i don't know if that's if that's study that's ever been done i think it i i wish it was uh here we go this is cuffer and throne they need, to, they need to be I scanned have... they do need to be scanned yeah. indeed i can't believe that i've lost this all of a sudden i had this in the break <laughs> we spun around and looked at cuffer and throne i swear we did that is amazing yeah wow. let me uh mm -hmm. I, I do want to try and find it think well while he's looking for that you want to tell the story again of you you went to a was it a museum in italy yeah i went to the um vatican museum in italy and they had they had all these statues that looked just like this um uh, they were amazing and and i noticed the same thing i mean that was uh the the statues were the work of the statue was one level of sophistication and then the hieroglyphs were another level, like a lesser level of sophistication. And then in some cases, at the very bottom of the statue, there was um, Roman, uh, <laughs> you know, really roughly scratched in, like, Roman letters and stuff on the bottoms of the sky. Yeah. I'm like, okay, this is, uh, you know, later people doing the same thing. Yep. It's it's human like, nature. Oh, it's, we well, it, it in, in, in the, I think in the museum, well, I don't know what the Romans were doing, but it's it looked like they were categorizing it or numbering it, putting a serial number on it. It's kind of <laughs> what it looks like, you know. It's what we, because what, then you have the modern like written numbers that they're yeah yeah they do the I same thing. We do the same thing now. This is Kuffer and Throne, so it's this beautiful diorite green diorite statue with the falcon uh, behind the head uh, protecting it. And again, you've got writing next to the feet. We've got that lotus flower motif on the side. And it's a wonderful statue. I mean, it's. You can see why it's so precious. Um, but again, same thing with the with the writing. I don't have a good shot of it, but the writing next to the feet here is the same. It's it's chiseled out, and you know it's obviously a it must. I'm sure it has Huffer's name on it. There's a tube drill between the feet, which is another level of technology. Uh, 
So yeah, this this to me screams inherited object that was then reclaimed. But beautiful. I mean, absolutely. You know. Yeah. What it must have been. What it must have been. Was that a? Find. Was that a drill mark between the feet, or was that a like a sun disc representation? Uh, I I this is this is a common thing on statues. I believe that's a tube drill. That's been that's been polished out. Okay. But yeah, you have a that's been hollowed out with a, a tube drill. That's the What's only way interesting you about that it. is that there there are a whole lot of statues where there's a little person between the feet. Yeah, of in the some giant of statue. So I wonder maybe. if that was maybe there was a metal, like a gold. Yeah, set into that hole or something. I don't know. Yeah, possibly that's, that's and gold. Sometimes. Was used in a lot of Sometimes those little people are meant to represent the soul of the king. Mm. We always thought it was understanding. Yeah, they're standing under. Understanding. Understanding? Yeah. That was a, yeah, they are. It, 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 de it depends. <laughs> okay, so back to the pyramid. I think there's two, really two features I want to point out here. So again, we talked about how it's built into the side of a hill. This is on the... God, what am I? I got to get my. Uh, this is the uh, eastern side, sloping down, and so what? What? What happened with the pyramid was they had to, they had to cut out the backside uh, to like hollow out, and you'll see when we get around, there's like a ten meter, um, you know, cliff. We saw it briefly in in an earlier shot. So they've they've dug down ten meters, and then they formed part of the pyramid itself out of bedrock, which we'll see. But then on the on this side, the eastern side, I think it is. They had to build the plateau up, so you 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 not you know it's not just bedrock. They had to do a tremendous amount of engineering in the uh, the plateau and in the in the in the foundations itself to then provide that flat pat platform to build the pyramid and the pyramid structures on. And so the key thing here is to look at what we're standing on because these are these are these uh, three dimensional um, interlocking limestone tiles. And I just the one thing I'll pause here real quick to show you is you get a sense of how deep they are with this line here where the camel is, is laying down. So you, you're still talking about a meter or so thick, so three, four feet thick, massive um, limestone blocks in the ground. And they're, they all interlock like a giant 3D puzzle. And look at the size of some of these foundation tiles. The, the interesting thing about them also is that they truly are um, interlocking in three dimensions. They, they not only are shaped to, to fit each other side by side, but they fit the bedrock beneath it. So they're actually been shaped to match the bedrock. And there's, there's areas where you can see that. But, you know, some of these limestone tiles, 150 tons. Easy. And see, Easy. that's suggestive, again, of the, you know, earthquake proof or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like they're expecting this whole system to be vibrating, uh, whether it's earthquakes or whatever. But, right. um, yeah, you wouldn't want to flatten the bedrock and then set stones on that because they could slide around. Right, uh, but to fit them to the contours of the existing bedrock, they would stay in position. You know, even with yep. uh, vibration. Vi exactly. Yeah, and there's, you know, it's it's interesting too because in this you, you see this also in the in the Great Pyramid to a lesser degree, but not only is it does it did they do that in the foundation, but you know they actually have blocks, and you also see this in the Great Pyramid. But there are some of those blocks formed from the bedrock itself, so it's like. The ground kind of locks into the whole structure. You know, you've got in this pyramid, it's actually like three or four courses on the on the on the the uh, I guess the uh, the western side that um, that that lock in, and um, it's kind of they just they just sort of gradually transfer to blocks with the slope of the bedrock. So they they dug down, and we'll see this on the other side. But you know, everyone walks over this, and the camels crap all over it. But it's like. You know, a huge piece of that. Look at the size of this thing. Now, are these like Amazing. stones that are in there? I keep seeing these little round yep. uh, stones between the joints. Is that what they are? You, yep. You see, see some incredible detail in the foundation tiles, not only on this, the other pyramid too. And it also extends even to the, the foundation that's what would have originally been beneath the casing blocks. Yes, we do not want to buy the cat today, sir. Um, <laughs> it's just like we were, there's not, there was plenty of Egyptians here just in, out of interest. They, um, you know, the, the Egyptians uh, roll up here on Fridays and, and uh, Saturdays, and we were, I think, here on a Saturday. Uh, but, yeah, so they, they the, the little blocks, the little keystone blocks, you, and some of them are tiny. And, and in some cases on the Great Pyramid and even here, where the casing stones have been removed, 
you you see them underneath like as it they were never meant to be seen but it's this incredible level of detail that's in the foundation that's just mind-boggling like why do that why not just fill it with sand if it's just you know who cares but yeah. apparently they cared that it was it had to be solid so you're saying ben in front of the uh Ben, in front of the Sphinx, I know there's massive paving stones. Are those mm -hmm. the same as you see up there by the second pyramid? Uh, I think so. Yeah, there's there's uh, a, a similar size. There's a lot like you the the val the, the Valley Temple and the Sphinx. Oh, you mean in front of the paws of the Sphinx, or just in, directly in front of it? In the no, I, I'm talking in front of the Sphinx Temple and the Valley Temple. Valley I know Temple. there's big paving stones on the ground there. I I'd just wondered to... if they're very similar to what you see up there on the top of the plateau. I'd, I'd have to look and I'd have to look. I'm not sure. Uh, I have to dig up some footage and look, but I wouldn't, I would suspect so given that the pyramid temple and the, and the Valley temple have similar sized blocks of limestone and this, and, and, and this paving system almost extends down the whole causeway. It's not, some of the blocks aren't quite as big as up here, but you know, they, they were just, there's so much that's gone into the bedroom. Again, it's like, you know, you're talking about years of planning and years of construction just to do that part of it. Like, it's insane. And you can see the, the, the slope of the rock, right? This was the original slope of the hill where it's been carved in on the back here. Uh, and, and we'll come back around on the other side. I, I, I do want to, we're going to come back to this area. We'll finish over here because this is very interesting as a quarry. Uh, the, the one other thing I wanted to point out really quickly that we're going to see a lot of is that this pyramid's unique in that the, the bottom two layers were cased in granite and you, you actually have granite casing stones and the two courses were all were all granite which is just i don't know how many thousands if not millions of tons of of granite that was shipped up here and very finely worked um it's astonishing and and we're going to uh where is it we're going to go we're going to go back i think uh let's go yeah we'll go so you see the floor tiles we'll come back and then we'll we'll come back to the quarrying um, that must have looked amazing, you know, if it, the rest of it's cased in the Tura limestone. limestone. You've got this bottom layer of dark granite so that it's like a, it's like a, what would you call it? Like a, it's like an accent line going yeah. all the way around the yeah. base and it, it's bright all the way up. Man, that must have looked amazing. Oh, God, what a love to see it. Yeah. Get that time machine. That's, that's Giza's. But Giza's I, can, the place. I can look at that, that, that little section of granite casing stones you were showing there and see that uh they had to put those down before they put anything on top of them because there's three behind the the one out in the front yeah or two behind it so you couldn't slide those un up underneath higher stones they would have had to have been put down first indeed yeah yeah there's there's obviously they built that up that way on the ground and you got to imagine i guess it was a continuous join and we're going to see so this is and what you see here is just the purely the rubble left over from quarrying and there's two as we walk as we walk around uh there's a couple things to look at one one that i like to point out is the we'll see a few just down here a little bit but some of the blocks in the pyramid structure itself are gigantic they're huge and much bigger than any of the other pyramids just the limestone blocks uh and we'll, we'll see some of them there's definitely i just call it like more megalithic and the other thing that i get asked about a lot and you'll see it in all of these stones are these marks here these these dashed lines okay so this yeah, is I noticed that in the in the grooves in the in the previous uh video yep. you were just showing that's quarrying that is how it's oh. not not how the ancient egyptians according to the ancient egyptians didn't do it this way they hammered it out with with uh with with pounding stones apparently nonsense but this is how it's ever it's been done pretty much ever since <laughs> and and all of the quarrying work that was done here is done that way so what happens is you take an iron chisel and you dig yourself a groove in the stone, and you dive. You dig a series of those grooves. You you pack wood into it. You wet the wood. The wood swells, and you hope to split the block in a in a relatively straight line. So that's you see that absolutely everywhere. And you're not that's not Egyptian. That's not anything except for quarrying. That is that is a and it, some of it may be Egyptian, like later period Egyptian quarrying, but that's how it's done. And they and they did that because they wanted to use the flat faces of of the, the beautiful stone that was. You know that had had been done by the dynastic Egyptians or by the builder culture. You know they were trying to quarry these stones to take away those flat, nice surfaces to then use in other constructions because they wouldn't have to you know use it themselves. So that's that's why this stuff got quarried because it was so flat, so perfect. You know people wanted that. They would try and take pieces of these stone to use in other mm -hmm. construction. But you see it everywhere. It makes me angry. 
<laughs> I have to say. Yeah. I just get mad. When mm-hmm. I think but about yeah, it. and I, I can. Yeah. I'm also seeing the uh, the sort of heterogeneous Jimmy. nature of the the paving stones out there, the way that yep. they're all different shapes and sizes. That's cool. Indeed. So, are you guys standing up on more tiles, or is that bedrock no, platform? It, no, this is this is all this is all still uh, foundation and tiles. In fact, this is um, right on the edge. And see, this is also kind of interesting. Check this out. It's like there's a granite block intermixed with the limestone. See this? Yeah. In this course here, the granite block goes back a little further. Now, it's it wasn't all. So it wasn't all even. I don't know why they did this, but there's definitely different locks areas. That, locks it into place. Yeah. Yeah, and no, it's. I mean, it definitely is like th- this very regular stair stepping. At the at the base there, and then it gets all jumbled up up top. But mm-hmm. you can imagine during the building of the thing, you would you would uh, continue the courses in that manner. So you'd have mm-hmm. a very regular structure to be supporting uh, materials that you're bringing up yep. as you're building it. Um, and then I guess the last part, which is the confusing part, is casing it because it gets smooth. And like Russ was saying, if you did it from the bottom be very difficult uh, <laughs> where is your support structure after yeah. that like how are you i mean you'd have to build something that's leaning up against this perfectly flat smooth thing and then be bringing up these giant stones that weigh multiple tons to yeah i don't know it's hard to imagine so it's okay, a lot of yeah, scaffolding that's a, that's a very giant block yeah that's yeah. a huge megalithic block right there. yeah and you did this is the biggest blocks in any pyramid construction i've seen like massive um yeah. blocks in these early courses yeah, and, and again, it's like it's not the precision of uh, it's not all perfectly finely fitted. Even though it's been shaken around with earthquakes and whatnot, uh, it definitely got rougher as they went up. There wasn't, there's not, you know, there's some gaps. There's not. They didn't use mortar, I don't believe, on this pyramid. There's Brian sort of demonstrating how big it is. We saw Jimmy up there a minute ago. But yeah, this is this is why I call this megalith, like more megalithic. It's yeah. bigger, you know, bigger blocks of limestone in some of these courses. And just, why, 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 why? Go to the effort of these huge pieces of stone. Uh, it's, it'd be interesting too. Like, how far up do they go? Is it just these first three courses, or I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how far in they go. I don't know if anyone's. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how we'd tell. Uh, I mean, yes. that's the, what I'm what I'm thinking about is is once again like repurposing or, um, you know, later building stages where you have this foundation that's built that has these chambers down below and it has mm-hmm. some purpose and then later they come along and build the the actual pyramid structure on top of this foundation yeah, i think yep. graham hancock has mentioned that that he thinks that there may have been these big giant platforms that right are made out of those megalithic blocks and then later on people came and sort of started building the rest of the pyramid on top of it but those first cor- first couple of courses, courses constitute like a platform. There you go. Yeah, that's that's a great idea. I, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. It like does. Your building phases in 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 South America, right? You got these yep. megalithic yep. foundations, and then there's later cultures stack smaller rocks up on top of them. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm fairly convinced that there were multiple periods of building going on here. Like, I think for sure that the there was work done in and in, in disparate periods uh, on these structures. Um, but yeah, the, the ancient did, text, the ancient, the ancient text says that there's three different periods that go okay. way back before the first dynasty. There's the first period where the Nedaru, the gods, so-called, you know, came to Egypt, started that civilization. Then the Shemsu Hor, yep, a period that is pre-dynastic. There's definitely three periods of history that. And, you know, some say, though, well, that's just a kind of a mythology story. <laughs> but when you see like three different periods of building, don't you have to take those into consideration? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's a great point. The, the Shemsu Hall, the Followers of Horus. And yeah, I, do, I love some of these casing stones that are left. Just such precise work. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. And just the, 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 the rubble that's, le- <laughs> that's left from this. It's just, it's, it's, yeah, it's infuriating. And you can see a pretty straight line. I mean, where those megalithic blocks go up, it just boom. Yep. You know, there's a nice mm-hmm. defined line all the it way could down. Could have the been side a platform. You, yeah. you might be right. Yeah, it's just like, and you could the underground the platform, the rest of the pyramid. Hmm, maybe. Yeah. Yep. Your, there's your three periods. Yeah, and that's that's I talked about that a, a few times. The whole, uh, the yeah, the 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 Zeptepi, and the Nedaru, and then the Shemsu Hall. And that's, yeah. you know, that is what they considered their history, and it's this arbitrary decision in today's 
time to kind of determine what's myth and what's reality. Yeah. Uh, you know. The the problem the problem with the Netaru, and that just comes from the word Netter, which means the gods. That's right. The problem with that is, is they say, you know, that's the period of the gods, and then people think gods. Okay, that's mythological. Myth. Yeah. But gods just meant highly enlightened humans, very yeah. sophisticated. That's all that was meant by that term. Yeah, and it's, it's a funny parallel too with you, you have a similar, you know, the Shemsu Hor talked about a bit that way as well as being advanced and enlightened. And then you go to South America, which again is, and we haven't even talked about it. South America is a possibility for these sort of swap casts as well. Absolutely. Um, that, uh, you know, you have the whole Wiracosha, Viracosha legends where they, you know, talked about them being able to move boats that move, that made snakes of the water and, and didn't have sails. You know, it's like describing a wake. Right. And they had they had. Boxes. I was uh, I was talking to Brian Forster last week about this, but about the Inca and where they built. But they were just like the Egyptians. In order for them to be kind of regarded by history, you had to build your monument or your temple on top of something that came before from the yeah. gods. That is like written in stone almost. That you had to build on top of previous ruins to be attached. To the mythology and the whole history of your yeah your country and your culture yeah you, you you find it sacred you find it profound and then you you attach your culture to it and that's in some ways we do it today in the same way we we find these sites profound and sacred and the egyptian culture mm-hmm. kind of attaches itself to it you know they're very pr- proud of of all of this and rightfully so it's yeah it's it's it makes sense right it, it, it it's human nature and the dynastics here with were here for thousands of years, so they had a lot of time to attach themselves to this stuff. I think. Right. Exactly. All right. Let's. Uh, it's so also get... interesting. I, I've you know I've been thinking about this just the concept of these, for example, the statues, being much older that are inherited. And that, yeah, and yet you see this style in you know the the hieroglyphs in the tombs, like mm-hmm. they definitely. So, so like the entire the headdress everything the, the way that you know that 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 if that's what happened it's really interesting how they they ended up trying to look like those statues right right that would be basically what yeah so happening yeah it's an interesting point and that's it's that's the same direction i go with it i think there was there was there was imitation going on and not and in fact, i'm working on a video about saqqara and the vases and and where i think a lot of that started uh for the dynastic egyptians but Yes, and and given when you look at their history and what they describe happened here, they and them describing themselves as a legacy civilization, I don't think it was just statues and that that they inherited. It seems to me that they inherited parts of the culture, and it's it's kind of becomes difficult to separate the dynastic Egyptians from the the builder culture, if you want to call them that. I think um, okay. it's to me it's possible that they they inherited objects as well as some knowledge and and and. And culture. I mean, you know, maybe the religion that came from them. There, maybe a lot of that. A lot of their culture may have come from that. I don't. It doesn't seem to me that they. If if you consider these things to be functional or activated, it doesn't seem like they had that. They lost that. And I think a lot of that may have then been represented ceremonially throughout their right. culture. Like they use these places for that to try and reenact that. And yeah, that's that's why I think it, you know people look at it. Well, isn't that Ramses? Isn't that what they look like? Well, they they definitely modelled themselves after that. I think I think it's a possibility. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't. You know, it's hard to say for sure. Uh, you know, interesting discoloration on the stone here that was part of the casing block, um, and you see damage on some of these casing blocks too, just to tie it back into the video footage. But yeah, I I definitely think there's a case to be made that. You know that, that 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 we should maybe believe what the Egyptians said about themselves, which is they're a legacy culture from those who yeah. came before, and you know that's um... yeah. So so you're right. You're, I, I stated it too simply. It's it's more complicated than they found these statues and structures in the desert and then tried to look like them. They, they inherited a lot more than that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, so, but it's just interesting to me that you know I've been thinking about it like who who what. I mean, these are impossible to answer questions, but, you know, did the people that carved those statues, did they look like that? Or did, were the statues fully uh, symbolic all the way, you know, or did they, or did they have the same sort of headdressing, you know? Great I question. I don't know. It's, it's... Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, the only point I come down is like I, I make arguments where I, I sort of suggest I think there's arguments to be made about the boxes and maybe even the pyramid structures themselves being functional somehow in the past. Functional. You can't really say that about the statues. The statues definitely, you know, what that's that's artwork. Like that's maybe it is ceremonial. Maybe it is a representation of the gods of, of their gods, and yep. that's something that was inherited. I don't know. But then again, you know, there are there are texts uh, where they say that the you know the statues would nod. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? yeah. God. Okay. They, that's they participated in the temple. I mean, you know, this is a priest saying, "Yes, the statue nodded in agreement with everything I just said." You know, I, I don't know if that's really what happens, but it's definitely in the writings. This is the money shot. So we we finally got yeah. ourselves down to what I think is the southwestern corner. You can see the yeah, bed- and that video. That video is like all this time we've been talking. He's been walking along one, one side. side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a big structure. It takes. Yeah, it's awesome, man. That's really great. Sorry, definitely, go ahead. definitely worth walking around. So, what to point out here is that okay, so you see the natural slope of the bedrock. This is, I think, at at its maximum height, it's like ten or eleven meters, uh, thirty something feet, maybe a little more. And it's been carved down. They've carved all this out, and then you see right on this corner where they've shaped a whole bunch of this pyramid out of bedrock. Like they built it. It's been it's been hacked back up out of bedrock. And you see it quite yeah, and clearly it's stair here. Stair step, just like the block courses. It's the courses are built, yeah. So it's they've the whole thing locks in. It's all a level structure, but a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, there's parts of this are literally formed back up from the bedrock. So this was, I think, this puts it's got to put to rest the idea that you know the, the pyramid builders were making it up as they went along, and they made mistakes and they changed their plans on the fly. I mean, come on. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Good point. You can't. Well, I mean, I guess you could repair with blocks if you cut too much, but yeah. I mean, they clearly cut the same stair step pattern that they made in megaliths on the other side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, I'll, and you know, if you're going to case it in a different stone, then yeah, you would need it to be a structure that can hold those casings. Uh, right. But yeah, that's really that's really cool. It I made cool. a video made a video on that corner of that pyramid right there about three years ago, but that was remarkable to me that. That is actually the natural mound coming out. Mm-hmm. And then they just locked the pyramid into that corner. That's just amazing technology to me and something that I just never even considered until, yeah. you know, just did some investigating. And I know Matt did a video on that too. Yeah. And we do not build stuff like that. I mean, no. that is that is a really difficult thing to do in terms of building. I mean, if you don't start with a flat foundation, um, Right. That's just, uh, yeah, that just makes the job that much more difficult. It's hard for me to believe that that whole thing <laughs> is solid. I just, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe I just don't have the right. I mean, obviously, I don't know the, the <laughs> minds of the builders, but it's hard for me to have watched this video of you walking down the side of it and all this stuff and looking how they could. And, and then just, no, it's just a pile. It's a triangular shaped pile of rocks. That's I don't it. think so. There's Primitive stuff people. In there. <laughs> yeah. yeah there's got to be stuff in there too yeah you're right it does it's, it's yeah the mountain in the west there you go right. yeah yeah so let me set up this last little clip here so what we did it, this is actually from the this far corner here so so we so i think this is southwestern i'm sure someone's going to go you got this completely backwards but I th- this i think this is south, uh, southwestern corner and this is the northwestern uh corner and the the next footage is going to be from this northwestern corner, basically on the side where the entrance is, and we're 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 kicking around. So looking down now, the north side here, there's the entrance, and you can see the uh, the wall here. So and I will make one mention about this wall. It's eroded. There's there's passageways and there's 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 shafts dug into it. There's all sorts of things. It's a whole other topic. But uh, what is interesting in this corner that I like to point out is this is a quarry. I pointed this out with my comments about uh, about geopolymers, yeah. but this is where they'd cut limestone blocks out of the out of this hole that they dug, and they used it in pyramid construction or wherever. Right? They, this is there's still blocks that have you can see where they've been cut from their their shapes uh, from the ground here. And then there's there's actually an inscription on the wall here, and maybe we can hear some of this. Uh, it's it's a hieroglyphic inscription. Yeah, it's hard to hear Yusuf. I'll just I'll mention it. So 
this is um, this is a, a, a report. This basically says that the quarry master was here to quarry the stone for Ramses uh, the second, and he he used them to build uh, a temple in Heliopolis. And we're not talking about limestone. This was a granite quarry, and they were quarrying the pyramid. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah, wow. this is this was Ramses actually taking stone from here, quarrying. And the, the record of the quarry master that was that was the overseer of the quarry uh, was doing this for Ramses, and um, so yeah, this is this is and this was happening in the nineteenth dynasty. So and then I think they uh, some of the other reports I've read about this pyramid is that it may have been looted or started. Some of this may have been happening as as, as early as the first intermediary period, uh, sort of after the old kingdom. So it didn't take you know it wasn't very long into that civilization before they started kind of looting, and. Um, just to be clear, that writing on that wall is saying that they were quarrying the pyramid. That's, yes. That's, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a granite quarry. They, they weren't. They weren't. They didn't need the limestone from here. They, they were taking the granite. Which was, you know, Ramsey's. I, I talk about it in a few videos. He 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 did that quite a bit and not, notoriously, uh, as as Petrie liked to say, he he was the great usurper. You know, he, he usurped a lot of these monuments. He would would carve his name over the name of previous kings his um you know his his uh his son uh, would do that as well what's his son's name um uh, uh it's an m i think i, I yeah no the, there was a number of pharaohs in the 19th dynasty where this became uh a pretty pretty firm practice and it's it's kind of it, but today we call him Ramses the great you know everything's for Ramses all these statues are Ramses all of these all these monuments are Ramses he was just very good at, at taking and renaming a lot of monuments. And it's, it's weird that we that's the accepted paradigm because even in Petrie's day, they were pointing this out. Like They were like, look, there's other names that we can determine underneath these hieroglyphs or in these other spots that are from older dynasties. How can you say this was created for Ramses? Now, no doubt he was a very powerful guy. Egypt was at a height during him. He probably had a lot of work done, but still... Uh, you know, I think a lot of the stuff that that is attributed to him is just him, you know, hijacking it from from <laughs> older yeah. times, writing his name on older stuff. Yeah, there was there was a number of Ramses. Yes, there were. Yeah, Ramses the sixth. This is Ramses the second. I'm talking about um, specifically. Um, Meren yeah, Ptah. His son was Meren Ptah. Very tall wall to yeah. the right there yeah. you guys are walking yeah that's very high skip past this just so we're not exactly sure where this is because i don't really want to give everything away um <laughs> in terms of where to go and find stuff that's interesting i love the use of look here <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so it's a diorite pounder these things don't right. tend they tend to disappear from places like this um so this is one of the one of the uh, apparently quarrying devices that were used to shape the stone. <laughs> that was how they made everything. Yeah, uh, sure. This is all you need to do to make a structure like this or to get your granite looking like that is you just need one of these and some time and away you go. <laughs> uh, <so. laughs> High tech. High tech, yep, pounding stones. There you go. I also point out that that wall is, in some places showed pretty heavy erosion. Erosion, well. indeed it does. Yeah, yeah particularly on that uh, western I, side. That that might have been flattened because they wanted to write on it, right? I don't right. Know, but yeah. Places, it's eroded. Yeah, there's uh, particularly, I think, on the western, sort of the southwestern side here. Yeah, like that is. Yeah. 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 I just love this angle on it, too. It's just it's such a beautiful structure. Um, um, it is. Yeah. There's well, a lot. Look at the hole they dug. We're standing in the hole that they dug. Like. That's me talking. Yeah. We're standing in the hole they dug. Is that a cave to the left there? That, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. In fact, definitely. In fact, I, I have plenty of footage of um, this is this is actually looking into some of these caves. So interesting shapes on the ceiling, right? So this, this is actually peeking in into some of these in this wall. This is from a, a much earlier, this is 2016, uh, looking at this back wall. We, we sort of were poking around quite a bit. Um, and there's caves. There's... There's holes in the ground. There's shafts. I think in this room, if I think wow. the camera pans down and there's a there's a shaft. It's been covered up in a bunch of scaffolding. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here. There's you know they dug everywhere. 
Yeah, so this is keeping stuff, and I think over here you might see there's a there's definitely a hole in the ground over here. Yeah. Um, what is up with that ceiling? Isn't that interesting? And you start to yeah. look at the acoustics and start thinking in that direction. You know, the, the resonant properties. And, yeah. Um, I have a using I have a thought on the ceiling. I think that might represent. I I think the ceiling might represent that wavy kind of pattern, just the cosmic ocean of the sky looking up. Oh, yeah. From a tomb, yeah, possibly. That's my thought on that. Oh yeah, there's, there's Luke, who was, uh, I was, I was think I was running around the uh, the the first pyramid. We were both filming. This was our last day on a, a trip in 2016. But yeah, so back, it's the same. It's that it's that western uh, face of the pyramid, and then I just, I mean, same footage we've kind of seen in the other film. Let me just see if there's any. Uh, anything looking at the uh, the wall here? Yeah, so here you go. It's a closer oh up, God. a closer look at some of the erosion on the wall. Yeah, that's severe erosion there. Yeah, she's pockmarked. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I don't know. It's like uh, acidic water or something. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's eroded yeah. in a number of different ways. And then, yeah, as we as I said, shafts, chambers. Uh, I'm sure people were being buried and all sorts of things were dug all around this. It would have been a very sacred area, right? It would have been... Right, yeah. This would have been the place. And I'm sure there was a priesthood that was probably running a, a business selling this sort of location. Uh, who knows? Be buried, be buried by the structures of the gods. There's a nice the, descending be passageway. Near the of the yeah. yeah, buried near the mountain of the west, yes. Yeah. <laughs> one, of those, one of those descending passageways filled up with trash um, and dirt. <laughs> Man, can you imagine cutting that i mean that goes that's, way down there it's a small a hole very square yeah yeah how do you yeah yeah it's it's a mystery but that's the so that's yeah that's that's the end of most of the footage i have i i uh i do have i mean plenty more just walking around the outside and, and staring up at it uh well that's yeah. that's great yeah. let's uh we could take a break come back and uh wrap it up yeah, and I and I have some follow up stuff from the show from last week. Okay, uh, and some corrections on stuff that I said. So, take a break and come back. All right, and we're back for the final segment here, uh, a wrap, and that was uh, absolutely amazing. Again, Ben, I wanted to thank you very much for for sharing all this with us. Yes, uh, the footage is awesome, and it's just a it's a very unique uh, look. You know, you can't find that anywhere. I, I, I really appreciate how your attention to detail uh, with the videos and your knowledge and everything. Uh, I know you. all of our listeners appreciate it. So I yeah. just want to say thanks for all that. It's great. Absolutely. Great stuff. Yeah. My pleasure. Um, I'm happy to be able to share this. It's a good, I think it's a good format. I think people, uh, I th yeah, I think uh, people like it. I saw a lot of comments from your viewers too in the, in the comment sections on the video. So that's a yep. bit of fun. Um, yeah. I'm glad you guys like it. I think it, uh, I think it works well. We got, and as I said, you know, many more, options to pick from to do more of these yes uh, there's other pyramids here there's other whole other pyramids i think i mentioned earlier south america i mean there's there's yeah, um, yeah. we could we could look at some of those sites too at some point there's you know a walk around Sacsayhuaman, for example or even cusco that i think because it's all more or less the one thing merged together is just um yeah pretty spectacular there's and there's lots of little details in all those places too that you you sort of miss with uh with some of the, uh, I guess, the shorter format things, it's it's a nice nice way to share raw footage and 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 to get to look at like all the nitty gritty little details here and there. Yeah, absolutely yeah, cool. So and I I had this habit of, um, you know, when Kyle and I are doing our show, I always try to go back and review the the after we publish it, I go back and listen to it and listen to the things that we brought up and think of new points or other ways I could say things. So I have a couple of things about that from the last show. Uh, -huh. uh, just things that we were thinking about, but w number one, and some people in your comments pointed this out and they're totally right that I was talking about thermoluminescence dating and that maybe they could take some samples from the box that got, you know, blown up that that's totally wrong. Like, and I didn't even think about this during the show, but because they used dynamite, that would have, that would have zeroed it out. Yeah. Uh, Cause that's a heat event. Enough. Right. And it that's is. what you, that's what thermoluminescence or, or optically, optically stimulated luminescence looks at is low level thermal events. And dynamite is definitely qualifies. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it would, have, it would yeah. have zeroed it out. So they would need to take a sample, and preferably, you'd want a sample from a part of a box that couldn't have had a fire 
burned near it. I mean, I know there's no soot in there, but even if somebody held a torch next to one for a couple of minutes, right, you don't want to right. take a sample from that site. So the best thing to do would be to like lift one of the boxes up and get something out from underneath. But of course, right. that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, um, that would be an ask. That would be an ask. Yeah, that would be a task. I mean, they yeah. could probably go around behind one of them and get something, you know, on a box that they're not worried about damaging. But yeah, definitely, yeah. I was completely wrong about uh, using those okay. fragments. So. I yeah. wanted to point that out. And then the other thing, the last thing you showed us was that tiny little tunnel at the end. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Kyle and I were talking about it later, and I'm like, how did the, who? How did you even... How, okay, if they're doing that by hand with chisels and hammers, how did they even do that? Can you lay inside that tunnel and, like, hammer at the at the back end? Is it big I, enough to do that? I th yeah, if you cleared the rubble out of there that's in there, I think you could you could squeeze... You could get in there. Yeah, you, you'd have to crawl. It, it looks like a crawl space it's probably but, not laying down you could you could definitely be on your hands and knees I, yeah i think so yeah it looks and i think i'd have to take a closer look at the wall there too it, it seems to me to be bedrock yeah uh, but you know there, there's definitely like yusuf said like they thought the serapium ended at one area and then somebody found it it it, it continued um so i guess they must have gone through so must have seen some some built walls and gone through those and there was yeah. definitely built walls like a, a lot of those boxes were actually bricked in like they were enclosed before when when Marriott found them, they had, they they had to, had to remove right. bricks and walls. But yeah, I, I, I that I think that that looks like bedrock to me at the end of that wall. Like I, I don't think that's a constructed wall. So yeah, whatever's in there or whoever however they did that, it seems to be, yeah, there was that was either was if it was done by hand, it was done painfully, and some people like right. crawling into this space. Um, it the, seems it seems that at one period in history, somebody had an amazing ability just to slice slice through the bedrock yes you see it at zayed al Aryan, abu ruwash yep and it's very unique and it's you kind of you go in there and then you just stop and think well you know how did they how did they do this or why did they do this this way yeah. and i just think people back then just thought entirely different than we do today and that's why we can't figure this shit out yeah it's a it's a good point. Yeah, I like to say that that whoever it's you you are seeing a, a clearly obvious mastery in stone. Like they had a way of working in this medium that seems to be easier than we find it today. You know, it, it is. I can't. I just. I, I. It's not personal incredulity. It's. It's they were they were obviously work. I mean, it's not just um, how much effort you put in. Like they 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 seem to have had an ability to to work in this medium that was easier than. Uh, then we find yeah. it, and and however that is, I think some of those answers may sit outside of our current perspective, which is why I keep saying that like, we should investigate, we should, um, you know, we should be open minded in in how we look at this stuff because you never know, we might stand to learn something. Like I just, it's it's this idea that that everything that was done in the past must fit within the the lens of our perspective because we're superior and we know, you know, everything that 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 they know and then some. Like it's okay. They, I think there's. We certainly don't know everything about the universe. We're continuing to expand on our own knowledge all the time and make new discoveries. And you've got to imagine in 100 or 1,000 years, we'll know an awful lot more about the nature of things and the matter around us. But you know, I think uh, some of these answers may lie in those spaces that we don't, we don't, we don't know yet. Um, yep. Yep. But we, I we mean, even in, you can imagine even in 100 years. I really think, yeah. I really think we need to be open-minded to... A, a history that is an alternative of the Egyptologists. The Egyptologists know a heck of a lot about the history, but their refusal to budge on a history that goes back before the first dynasty is just, it's stubborn and uh, just not very cool for the people who are looking for the truth. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, I agree with that too. And there's, there's literally hard evidence for some of that as well. I think I mentioned this on the, when we recorded with Randall, but there was, um, uh, it has. I don't think that's come out yet. But that there's, there is literally some of those stone jars that they that they attribute back to the first, even the very first dynasties. You know, the, the really perfect stone jars. They and this is on record. This is an this is establishment fact in the Nubian Museum. They uh, there's an example of where they found some stone jars on sites that they had carbon dated to twelve to fifteen thousand years old, like the, the well and truly before the Egyptian dynasty. They've they found jars and, and some of these objects in sites that are way before the dynastic Egyptians, but they just that's it doesn't seem to make an impact on that on that fixed story of history, uh, as yeah. you say the, the the sort of orthodox version. And it's 
you know, the the other example I like to use is is Gobekli Tepe. They, you know, it's just like they, instead of moving back the date of civilization for humanity, which is really what that site I think represents, we just changed the definition of what it meant to be a hunter gatherer. Uh, and now it's just like, right. well, no, that site was done by hunter gatherers. They just like to play play around on weekends. And I'm like, come on, it, is it that hard to to shift away from uh, from established ideas? I guess that's the, the politics of a lot of that of a lot of that a lot of science, I guess. And this is, it, it comes back to the problem of, of Egyptology and archeology span in some ways. It's less of a science and more of an art. And, you know, it's, it's a, the, the, the nature of establishments itself is to resist change. And when you are your position of power in a, in an establishment at a university in the ivory tower as an academic derives from your expertise over this story, I think you defend that story. It's, it's almost, and, they often accuse the alternative um, space of being like a religion, but I think it's actually it's a case of you know you're describing how you're behaving yourself. It's 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 more like Egyptology and the Orthodox story is something of a religion. It has its priests that defend the doctrine of it, and and you know when you attack the doctrine, you're attacking them directly, which is why we just seem to have a lack of real debate and real uh, dialogue on this because. You know, you can't do experiments and, and there's no real hard sort of scientific process to follow. It's an interpretation of all this loose data. And, and ultimately, that's all it is. That's, you know, the points we were making about how these pyramids are attributed to these pharaohs. It's kind of this loose, you know, loosey-goosey sort of relationship. Um, yep. You know, it's not hard fact. It's, it's, it's an interpretation. It's one interpretation. And also throw in there the last point I'll make is that I don't want to discredit Egyptology and all that either I think they've done a, a wonderful job and they know they focus a lot on the daily life and how the dynastic civilization uh, was structured and, and how it and its history and how it ran and I think all of that's legitimate like that's how that that ran but it doesn't preclude the notion that they inherited a lot of these objects and it just flat out right. ignores a lot of the technological uh, evidence for it so yeah and uh, going back when I when I did my video series about when when I did my video series three years ago on every pyramid in Egypt, you know, and I was kind of mm -hmm. going to take the whole thing into context. There was at least ten pyramids where, you know, they will give attribution due to a fragment of something found nearby in a little temple. Yeah, and then at least ten of these pyramids, it says, but there is no consensus, no agreement, and the builder is basically unknown. But right. you still have that attribution that, you know, and I would say about 15 of the total pyramids in Egypt, it's it's just guesswork and flimsy guesses. Yeah, I always thought that, that you know, it was confirmed. These are these guys' pyramids. It's just guesses. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right, and it's, it's, it's fragments of things. I mean, I saw the same thing with, um, I mean, this is getting kind of away from Egypt, but when I was really doing diving deep into the research about Baalbek and the platform there versus the Roman temple versus the Greek temples and the other, all the other construction on top of that platform. And I was trying to find out why does, you know, what standard model archaeology, why, why does the mainstream attribute this entire structure to basically the Romans? But what, what, what is the evidence here? And mm -hmm. so I was reading the papers that, you know, there's one particular paper that everyone cites when they're like, this is the this is the evidence that it was Romans. And I went and I actually read the whole paper. And basically what it came down to in that paper was, number one, a, uh, a style similarity to deep interior stones in the uh, in the uh, what's it in Jerusalem, the, the mm -hmm. Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. Right. So deep interior stones mm -hmm. in that have a stylistic, a slight stylistic similarity to some of the big giant uh, stones at Baalbek at the platform. And they're like, well, Herod built that. So, you know, that, you know, that's Roman. But they <laughs> actually don't know that about that Temple Mount either. Those deep interior stones are not what Herod built. He built he built it outwards. But the other right. way they attributed it was they found one piece of block that had fallen from something that when they flipped it over, it had a fraction of graffito on it that attributed something to some Roman guy. And I'm like, okay, that's not even connected to the template. It's the same thing, right? It, it's not yeah. even connected. It's a piece of graffiti. You know, there's no way to tell if that was originally there from the structure or not. And those were the two pieces of evidence in that whole paper that everybody cites to say this platform was built by the Romans. So really when you dig into the evidence, you find there out. There was. Yeah. 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 
there was 18 there was 18 dynasty pharaohs building at Baalbek unless the Romans inscribe 18 dynasty pharaohs into st some of that stonework there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you I go. I didn't know that. I mean, oh yeah, Amenhotep, see, back in the, about 3,400 years ago, the boundary of what we know, what we call Egypt, and that's just based on a Greek word, so what did they call it before that? Yeah. But what we know is Egypt extended all the way from Sudan all the way up into Lebanon at that time. Oh, yeah. That and the pharaohs about 30, 3,400 years ago, we're putting in their temples in their northern territory, and that was a ball back. Uh, so there was something obviously there before the pharaohs. Yes. Yeah. And certainly before the Romans in that case, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well and truly. The Romans built that, the Romans built their temple at Baalbek for one specific purpose, and I'll be going into that in a video in a few weeks. All right. So, yeah. Look teaser. forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Got to, got to, got to throw a teaser. That'll be a shrouded in mystery video. Oh, good. Shrouded in mystery video. Yeah. Shrouded in mystery. Can't wait. Good stuff. Baalbek has a fascinating history. Doesn't it? Yeah. I tried to get there. Tried to get, couldn't make it on this. Just, just too much, you know, uncertainty. And, you know, it's become less safe than it once was, I think. And, um, yeah, maybe in the future. It's one of those places I got to, I got to see at some point. Yes. I, that's definitely on on my list for sure. I'll, I'll bet. Yeah. Well, hopefully it doesn't go anywhere. So. Yeah. It <laughs> yeah. <hasn't been> <laughs> yeah. 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 All quote. right, guys. Well, unless there's anything else, I I have to say this has been another fantastic one. Looking yeah, forward man. to more. No, I'm I'm good. Yeah. No. Thanks. Thanks for doing it. Thanks for coming along, Chuck. Too. It's been. Uh, it's always yeah, great to get your perspective, mate. Oh, it's been fun. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. I have no problem blabbing about history whenever. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll probably right, do it again. Well, thanks yeah. a lot and good night. Good night. Cheers.